you pray for more than sin and regain your godhood that's within because it's your birthright gotta regain your godhood because it's your birthright one God, one God, one King, one King, 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 one God, I'm not a slave, one a king, I'm not a slave, one God, I'm not a slave, one a king, I'm not a slave, one God, I'm not a slave, come back to your righteous state, this whole world gon' pass away. Yeah, I'm not a nigga off the block, I'm a god. On the highways and hedges, by the way, compelling my people to come in through the doorway of the Lord's crib. His temples within go feed. We go big, we go hard in the paint. Last whoever taints the words of his promises. Uh-huh. Prophecy is all this is ours. The whole universe is our turf with unlimited powers. <laughs> so pick a verse, any verse, and watch a prophet break it down to his very last compound. It's so astounding how it's sounding when it's put back together. Can't wait to hit the hood and hold camp, no matter the weather. Sin City Saints, all up in your area, cleaning up the sickness that's spreading like malaria. Doctors of the law, giving you the sedative. It's Shim God from the mighty trouble Benjamin. One God, one God, one King, one King, 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 one God, I'm not a slave, one a king, I'm not a slave, one God, I'm not a slave, one a king, I'm not a slave, one God, I'm not a slave, come back to your righteous say this whole world gon' pass away. Try your luck, a lot of these demons is trying us New man alive, I can't die enough Jews that been black, no denying us These curses have been on me, can't cry enough Logging all day for the freedom I got some enemies more than just eat them They don't understand it, he told you in Peter Trying to get back to the garden of Eden This is the last show, the righteous judge standing at the door Six rings on me like MJ, two thirds got to go. Double honors, we a flock of kings. Great light shining on the earth. The laws of y'all can't cut the corners. Tree of life is not a stain on us. Watch me whip a cherry. BHI, they put the blame on us. The Bible is a weapon. And you know we always got that thing on us. Who gon' rise up for the king? Chain me faster than I can blink. Redeem me from Edom. These last days, there ain't no time to faint. Yep. Big things popping. What time the great whore dying and them bombs need dropping? Most high about to switch a noodle, go Alfredo on them pasta. Cooking coons in the month of June, they can't barbecue like Papa. What you must forgot about Sodom, don't give me no lip. Especially if you send me on ships. Sauce don't need no chips, cherry is gon' dip. Kunta no toba, that's it. New Jerusalem, that's this. Gotta run it back, that's a hit. Backslide on the God, get your wish split. Nation gon' die, it's over, that's it. Babylon burning like a torch that lit. Watch the tone, it's the last trunk. Bombs dropping like a bass drum. 10,000 at my right. And in the seventh trump, thy kingdom come. Don't get caught on the heathen side and lose your chance on the holy ride. Destroying Edom and all his pride. After a thousand years, he go fry. He said, smoke. Please don't choke. You need prophets. OJ, no pope. Hope they caught it off the ropes. Truth, I bought it. Back that hope. This world, cold. Let my soul glow. Wisdom, twofold, please save my soul. Auction, blocks, my forefather, soul. The greatest, come back, legends of old. Out of the heat, we overcome. 
Fighting this war to the mystery done. I hear the words in your mouth. To see how you sound without a tongue. To see how you breathe without a lung. You can clearly see I'm out of blood. I can't forget. It's deep down, I gotta hold a grudge. So, it's time for the battle. For the blasphemy of the bastards. Let me get at them. Let me get at them. No more talking, it's action. Brothers, grab me my sword. It's time for this lion to roar. He pointed his finger at the temple of my God. Then it's all with his arm. Yeah, it is all with his head. I want to see it painted red. With the blood of a Edomite. Let his kids see him dead. Memorialize this day. Let's go. So they can know just what he said. This destruction of Nicana. And I can't think of nothing greater. Go. Go and kill every defiant Israelite in the land of Judea. With pleasure. Coming this. Right down the door. Coming in. The women. Off with his hair, off with his lights, I'ma put him to bed. You heard what he said, he wanted us there, so I'm taking his tongue and I'm making him beg it. Give me that shoulder, cause I'm rolling with warriors, soldiers. He the eagle, but we see a vulture. And a virus, we curing the culture. Gotta kill him at the source, like a heathen off his horse. Light his ass up, you a torch. Didn't wanna do it, but I'm forced to burn it all down to the scorch. Seeing the end, from the beginning. I came for the cuts, but I stay for the skin. And see blood in his mouth and the sight got me grinning. We wetting him up, make him look like a remnant. Better come correct, check your demeanor. We'll hang up your head like a straight from the clean. I pray for the nation, I saw my redeemer, I call it a vision, cause I ain't a dream of glory to my God, he the number one, swinging for the fences, then I treat his throat like a home run, ain't no fit for these demons, remember the law and the prophets, our victory from the almighty, better know that they never can stop it, we break limbs loose like change, if you think he can get out of pocket, the sons of the thunder electrified, time to let him die, we are plugging the socket, watch this, it's time for the battle, battle. for the blasphemy of the bastards, uh, let me get at him, let me get at him, no more talking, it's action. Uh, Brothers, grab me my sword. Me my it's time for this lion to roar. He pointed his finger at the temple of my God. Then it's all with his arm. Uh, yeah, it is all with his head. Uh, with his I want to see it painted red. Uh, with the blood of an Edomite. Let his kids see him dead. Uh, Memorialize this day. Let's go. So they can know just what he said. Uh, this destruction of Nicana. Nicana. And I can't think of nothing greater. Uh, uh, cut him Nicana. Don't get in my way when I fill up with anger. That's in the pieces. I got power with God. You know you in danger. You see the savior, shot like a taser, red right on my soul like a painter. But he's gonna brush him, I'm just gonna rush him. Run my two hands and compress him. Rush to all those that oppose, stock of the rock, the almighty chose. Iron rod, go and govern the globe. We the elect, no need for a vote. They gathered against me, they make it to most. I call on my God and he bringing the smoke. Ships come out the water, they don't even vote. Ships spinning with fire, it's murder she wrote. I'm trying to watch the enemy turn into smoke. I'm trying to dash the youth on the stone and watch the boy turn with ghosts. But you know how this goes. The breath of the dragon and back five. We turn him to stubble, we stoke. Clean swing, knock his head off. Broad day, knock the edge off. Putting your V formation to flight. It's like, aight. More death, more life. You pressed, we tight, we blessed. We done been through hell and you next. That's righteous, we glory. If it ain't bleeding, I'm bored, it'll probably get gory. I'm sight. It's time for the battle. battle. For the blasphemy of the bastards. Let me get at him. Let me get at him. No more talking, it's action. Brothers, grab me my sword. Me my it's time for this lion to roar. He pointed his finger at the temple of my God. Then it's all with his arm. Uh, yeah, it is all with his head. Uh, I want to see it painted red. Uh, with the blood of an Edomite. Let his kids see him dead. Uh, memorialize this day. Let's go. So check, check. What he said. Bishop on deck. In Christ bless Israel. Salute down. Face Jerusalem. Pray for Officer David. Men Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. 
Holy Father, we come before thee, Lord. Have compassion. Have love towards us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up in your holy Sabbath and giving us the mercy and grace. We thank you, Father. We thank you for our leadership. We thank you for brothers and sisters. We thank you for our son and our daughter. Heal them all, Lord. And send your angel, Lord, to heal, to heal us up from all our diseases, physically, mentally. Brother David as well, uh, Officer David from Tallahassee as well, brother, uh, Lord, that you heal this brother in the spirit of your son, Jesus the Christ. We also pray for all Israel to be healed. We also pray for all Israel, Father, that they may repent and keep that commandment and the faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We also thank you, Lord, for the we also thank you for the drink. We also, we also thank you, Lord, for allowing these brothers that go outside these streets with confidence and teach your people that law, thou law, statutes and commandments. We praise in you for that, for sending your angels to guide these men. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Father which is in heaven, honor be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us these days our daily bread and forgive us for our sin. Forgive other sins against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from all evil. The kingdom is yours and the power and the glory, Lord. Father, we also thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Then we also thank you for the meal, for the drink again, Father, that we are about to receive. And Father, please put your word within Bishop's mouth, Lord. He may, the word you are about to bring out, and may heal the nation. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 In Christ's name, we thank you. We glorify you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And destroy the ADL. I'm sorry. <laughs> Men Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Oh, oh, sorry, Christ, bless. Salute. Down, face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Oh, oh, sorry, Christ, bless. Yeah, give me that. You know I'm skinny. Uh, hey, where's my bag? Thank you. Brothers in. Atlanta. Hey. Turn out, turn out. One, two, one, two. Brothers and sisters, where we at? We are That's right. This special request. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have a special request. All right? We're going to ask the Lord to destroy our enemy. That may never rise up again. <coughs> That's from Rome. Man, damn, Atlanta is packed, brother. Oh, man, y'all y'all going deep in here. We we're in this building. We want to thank Deacon Lava for checking in. As he, he what you mean by that? All praise. Yeah, you'll be Lord. very mindful. Be very mindful after this class. We might have to deal with you, bro. Message. <laughs> hey, we just want to say, hey, Deacon Malakaya, he didn't. He, he was supposed to be here, but, but because he didn't check in, we tell him he cannot. So, Deacon Malakaya, next you make sure you check in. You and uh, Captain uh, uh, Joel. All right. We love y'all. You ready, Bishop? No. Nope. Oh, please. Uh, yeah. So, brothers, I'm sorry, D. Paper, Bible, paper, pen, notebook. Take some good notes. You're about to get some nice. <laughs> listen. You're about to get some good stuff today, man. Lord's yeah, will. Lord's yeah, will. Yeah. Lord's will. Take some good notes. Yo, yo, D, you know what? So, people don't realize the privilege they have in Atlanta and also brothers in New York. When you have Bishop come through. I mean, like people who's watching Bishop on TV, but y'all guys see the man himself. I mean, take, don't take that lightly, because we only here for a time. Yeah, I mean, we only here for a time. Yeah, I mean, let's show each other respect and love, man. All right. All praise. All right, all praise. How are you sisters doing this Sabbath day, yeah. brothers? How are y'all doing? Good. Good. Uh, shalom online to our brothers and sisters online. Those who are sick and shutting, and to our frenemies, frenemies, and enemies. Uh, Officer Alicia, who's running the IT? Who am I supposed to call out? You, all right, can you give me the first? Uh, put the uh, thumbnail on the screen first so you know the name of the class. So today's lesson is entitled The Abimelech Code. 
the Abimelech Code. All right. And we're going to open up with a little bit of history. Let's open up with the dictionary of the Bible first. Who's reading for me? Officer Yuri, sir. Where are you at? Over here in the cut, sir. He's over there? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, I can't even see. All right. Let's read this. Dr. Dr. William Smith's Dictionary of the Bible, Compromising Its Antiquities, Biography, Geography, and Natural History. When was this published? 1890. 1890. I always tell y'all the old dictionaries are the best dictionaries. Okay. Let's go into the next page, page 2, 2205. Yes, sir. Read that. The book of Obadiah is a favorite study of the modern Jews. It is here especially that they read the future fate of their own nation. Of their own nation. And of the Christians. So they know that they're the Edomites, the Bible speaks of, because that's what Obadiah is about. Go ahead. Those unversed in their literature may wonder where the Christians are found in the book of Obadiah. But it is a fixed principle of rabbinical interpretation that by Edomites is prophetically meant Christians. So those Edomites, and not only just the Christian, but it's them too. Good. And that by Edom is meant Rome. They're part of Rome. Good. Thus, Kimchi on Obadiah lays it down that all that the excuse me, all that the prophets have said about the destruction of Edom in the last times has reference to Rome. Right, and that Rome is America. Raise it up. This is what I want here. Go ahead. On Start Joe Kimchi, Kimchi also. Yes, sir. Kimchi on Joe 3, verse 10, says that Julius Caesar was an Idumian. So they know Julius Caesar was an Edomite. Cause I, can, can we look up Idumian real quick? Can we look up Idumian? The pe people online may be going, what's Idumian? Let's look that up real quick. Yep. Read that. Idumia pertaining to Edom. Read. Greek and Roman name for Edom. So Idumia is Edom. Let's go back now to the dictionary, other dictionary. Kimchi on Joel 3 and 10 says that Julius Caesar was an Idumian. That's right. So Julius Caesar was an Edomite. Go ahead. Skalger and not sure this is. reports. The Jews, both those who are comparatively ancient and, about us. Mm -hmm. and those who are modern, mm -hmm. believe that Titus was an Edomite. So they say Titus was an Edomite. Go ahead. And when the prophets denounce Edom, they frequently refer it to Titus. So Titus, who was um, one of the governors or Caesars, was one of the Caesars of Rome, was Edom as well. Give me the next, uh, next book, please. The book of Obadiah is a favorite... Wait, wait, wait. No, the next book. Yes. The Rise of Christendom by Edwin Johnson. When was this published? 1890. Zoom in so we can see. I can't see it. 1890. Okay, let's go to page 210. Just to highlight it. Yes, sir. At the end of the 240 years, the empire of the Greeks passed to the Romans to a man who descended from Esau, namely Augustus. So now they're letting you know Augustus Caesar was an Edomite. The Christians don't know this. Give me the next book. Who is Esau? Read that. Who is Esau Edom by Charles A. Weissman. Let's go to page eight. We're going to read the highlights. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Herod was a shrewd and unscrupulous tyrant. This is about King Herod. Go ahead. And was despised by the Judites. Because he was an Idumian. So now they're letting you know even Herod was an Idumian. So when you're reading the New Testament about Herod, Augustus Caesar, and Herod's family was Berenice. You had, um, what's the other one? Uh, Agrippa. These were all Edomites, all of them. Go ahead, read it again. I'm sorry. Herod was a shrewd and unscrupulous tyrant and was despised by the Judites because he was an Idumian and not one of their own stock. Mm -hmm. Herod hated the people of Judah. Now watch this real quick, real quick, Officer Yuri, can you read Luke chapter 1, verse 5? 
Because in church, you'll just read and just read on. No, you got to pause. Go ahead. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. It says Herod was the king of Judah. But it lets you know, the history lets you know, Herod was not of Judah. He was what, brothers? Right, and I do mean that, an Edomite. Thank you. Let's go on back now to the, the book, the dictionary, I mean. I mean, who is Esau Edom? That book, thank you. Herod hated the people of Judah, and one of his first acts was to execute 45 of the leaders of the old aristocracy mm -hmm. to eliminate any rivalry for leadership. So all of the Judite leaders that were there, actually, you had Levites there, Levites from uh, the Maccabean lineage. He got rid of them. Good. Having secured the kingship, Herod next destroyed the priestly line of Hycranus. Right, that was it. Actually, that was the Hycranus line. Go ahead. The last being Antigonus, mm -hmm. who taunted Herod with his Idumean origin and asserted that the kingdom should fall on one of the royal family. Right, so it should go to an Israelite. Raise it up. We thus find that in the years just before the time of Christ, Judea was controlled by an Edomite faction mm. who usurped the Judite name, land, and heritage. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It lets you know the Edomites usurp the Judite name, meaning they call themselves Jews, the land and heritage. Give me the next section, bottom part, go ahead. Historically, the Edomites became known as Jews. That's who y'all call Jewish people today. Those are Edomites, Scott. A term derived from Judea, which was derived from the name Judah, being the royal line of Israel, mm -hmm. though they were never of Judah or Israel. They were never Israelites. Next page, page nine. The Jew, the origin of the Jews. The Jews of today fall within two main types. The Sephardic Jew and the Ashkenazi Jew. Ashkenazis. Got the it. Sephardim are also known as Spanish Jews mm -hmm. and constitute about 5% of the Jews in the world. The Ashkenazim are the East European Jews, which were found in Poland, Russia, Germany, and Western Asia. This group of Jews make up 90% of the so-called Jews in the world. And it says so-called because that's what they call them, but that's not what they are. Go ahead. Many reference and historical sources have unequivocally identified that the bulk of the Ashkenazi Jews were derived from a people known as Khazars or Chazars in some texts. Hey, let me let you let me put, put y'all on game on something. The word Khazar is the same word that y'all use as Caesar. It's the same word. Like in, um, remember in uh, A Usual Suspect? Y'all saw that movie? Remember Caesar Cosa? Yeah, yep. That's the same word, Caesar. Caesar, uh, it's the same word. Go on back. The original Jewish Encyclopedia of 1905 revealed that the main stock of the Jews came from this Asiatic people known as Chazars or Khazars. Mm -hmm. Raise it up. Chazars, a people of Turkish origin whose life and history are interwoven with the very beginnings of the history of the Jews of Russia. Historical evidence points to the region of the Urals as the home of the Khazars. Next page. The Khazars are also of Edomite stock. So can somebody tell Yahya's that these Khazars are not Japhetic? Because you got a dumb faction of Israelites going, they're Japheth, they're Japheth, the with no biblical this? proof, no historical proof. Read that again. The Khazars are also of Edomite stock, and both stocks make up the present-day Jews. So these present-day Jews are all Edomites from Khazar. Go ahead. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, the original stock of the Khazars came from the land of Edom. Now notice where you got it from. The Jewish Encyclopedia, they know who they are. Their scholars know who they are. It's black Christians that don't know who they are. Yep. Black Muslims that don't know who they are. And when you, you can get the Jewish Encyclopedia, it tells you all in there. Give me the next page, please. 
as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That's right. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Jump down. God not only hates Esau, Edom, and is against these people, but refers to them as the people of my curse. Mm. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. This curse is not just on Esau, but also his seed and his brethren. Y'all see that? Now, a uh, uh, so-called Jew wrote this, put this book together. He figured it all, he figured it out. Give me the next page. There is not one favorable or positive statement in the Bible in relation to Esau, Edom. And, you, and then go back to these y'all and say, oh, they can be saved. Oh, they can be saved. You got Christians talking about, oh, Edomites can be saved. I know I'm an Israelite, but I'm letting you know the Edomites can be saved. You're idiots. Jump down. If God hated you and your ancestors, how would you react and what would you do? Damn. By natural reaction, you would be against God and his people yeah. and try to prevent them from finding out you are Esau. You would hide the fact that you're the Edomite. Good. The one God is against. Knowing that if God is against something, so will his followers. Mm, raise it up. Who is it that tries to conceal their identity as Edom, the one hated by God, by claiming to be Israel, the one loved by God? Only one group of people reacts as though God has a hatred for them. That is the Jews. That's these modern Jews. Good. Why do you suppose the Jews form organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League. That's why they form, and that's the group trying to get rid of TikTok because they say, oh, it's too much anti-Semitism on TikTok. They said, you got to sell it to one of us, meaning one of their bastard people. Read it again. Why do you suppose the Jews form organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League to monitor and combat, quote-unquote, hate? And to identify, quote unquote, hate groups. Anybody that's waking up to realize they're the Khazars, they're the Edomites, they go, no, no, shut that down. Shut them down. Go ahead. Would not Esau want to do this? Why is it that it is predominantly Jews who promote the anti hate laws mm -hmm. and other hate crime legislation? If you were Esau Edom, would you not do the same? An Edomite would also want to infiltrate churches. That's what they've done. So now, that's all I wanted out of that. Thank you. Now we're going to do some reading, Yuri. Officer Yuri, you ready? Yes, sir. We're going to get into the history on Abimelech. Let's go to the book of Judges, and we're going to start at chapter 8. And let's start at verse 29. Judges chapter 8, verse 29. Uh, 28, 28, 28. Verse 28. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more. And the country was in quietness 40 years in the days of Gibeon. So Gideon was raised up as one of the judges of Israel to help defeat the Midianites. So that's the foundation there. But go ahead. And Jerubbabel, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. Mm -hmm. And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son, whose name he called Abimelech. So, now, in verse 30, it talks about Jerubabel. That's the same Gideon. He had those two names. It's, as we read down, it's going to tell you. Now, notice during this time it said, Gideon had three score and ten sons. And his um, of his body, for he had many wives. When we were in rulership, understand this, brothers, I always stress this. When we ruled in our land, yes, we had more than one wife. When we went into captivity, Christ said, have one. You will not read when we went into captivity, brothers had more than one wife. We were <laughs> slaves. We are oppressed. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Well, I hope y'all do. Read on. Verse 31. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son whose name he called Abimelech. So now Gideon had a concubine. This concubine bore him a son named Abimelech. Go ahead. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of Joash, his father, in Ophrah of the Abizarites. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again 
and went a whoring after Balaam. They went a whoring after Balaam. Go ahead. And made Baal Berith their god. And made Baal Berith their god. Write this down. Abimelech means my father is king. Baal Berith means Lord of the covenant. Lord of the covenant. Read on. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jerubbabel, namely Gideon. You see that? The house of Jerubbabel, namely Gideon. It's the same person. Go ahead. According to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. So Israel started to disrespect the family line of Jerubbabel, who is Gideon. Now, jump back up to verse 33 real quick, Yuri. Verse 33. And it came to pass. As soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Balaam. Balaam, go ahead. And made Baal Barith their God. And made Baal Barith their God. Baal means Lord, Barith means covenant. So Baal Barith together means Lord of the covenant. Everybody got that? Yes, now, give me the first image right here. Abimelech, Abimelech means uh, my father is king. So now, look at it. Read that, Yuri. Baal with vegetation spear. The steel of Baal with vegetation spear. Can you zoom in on the image? So this is an image, one of the many images of Baal. He has a spear in his hand, a sword. Okay, so that's him right there. Give me the next one. Yep. Baal, god of fertility. Weather, rain, wind, lightning, seasons, war, sailors. Solid cast bronze of a votive figurine representing the god Baal, discovered at Tel Megiddo, dating to the mid-second millennium B.C. Watch this, read on. Symbol, bull, ram, thunderbolt. Now, I want you to understand that Baal, or many books pronounce it Baal, rather than Baal, they go pronounce it Baal. As like football, baseball, basketball. Hmm. Hmm. So you may think in your mind that ball or ball has no relevance for us today. Oh, how wrong you are. Au contraire, mon frère. Remember the symbol. Go back to the symbol at the bottom. Symbol. Bull, ram, Thunderbolt. So one of the symbols of Baal or Baal is the bull. Let's go on. Next picture. The king Baal, a.k.a. Bel, the king of demons. King of demons. Read that. Baal. Can you zoom in at the bottom so we can see it? The king of demons. Baal and the worship thereof is coming back to light. Yet I believe the reason we never really hear about Baal and Ashtoreth is because they have taken on so very many names. Write this down. Ashtoreth is Easter. Ashtoreth is Easter. Also pronounced Esther. Yes, the same Esther of Perim. That's the name. Esther is Easter is Ashtoreth. So read it again. Officer Uriam, sorry. Yes, sir. Baal and the worship thereof is coming back to light. Yet I believe the reason we never really hear about Baal and Ashtoreth is because they have taken on so very many names over the ages. Always remember that they took different names over the ages. That's why I said with Ashtoreth, you read that in the Old Testament. When you get to the New Testament, they use the word Easter. But it's the same goddess of fertility. Read on. When saints... Thinking of rebellion and witchcraft, they usually think of Jezebel. They think, Jezze is running this thing. But Jezebel is really just the offspring of perversion. Yet next to Satan, it's Baal and Ashtoreth with the real power. No. Next one, please. Read that. Baal definition. Canaanite god of fertility. He is often portrayed as the god of storms, lightning, thunder, and rain. That's what we read earlier. Go ahead, but watch this. He was worshipped in, in horrible ways. 
The name means Lord or Master. Israel was seduced into worshiping him. Now, what, look at his image. Raise it up or shrink it so we can see. Notice his image here is the bull. Remember, said he took on different, one of his symbols was the bull, another was a ram. They call that also an, a minotaur. So, ball definition, they got him as the bull holding a baby. Give me the next one. Read that. And the term bullheaded is derived from Baal worship. Bullheaded, not willing to change an opinion, plan, etc. Very stubborn in a foolish or annoying way. Stupidly stubborn, headstrong. Merriam Webster. Raise it up. Now, what do we notice here? Read that. The idols we worship mm -hmm. Canaan, circa 1300 BCE. Wall Street, circa 2000 CE. So they're letting you know that Baal is, Wall Street is in New York City. That's the stock exchange. That's very famous. Everybody goes down there to see that bull. They're letting you know that's Baal. They are. It's the same ancient God. Canaan in 1300, when we came out of Egypt, remember Aaron made that golden calf. And we was worshiping it when Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. It's the same false God. Give me the next one. That's it. Down on Wall Street. Same one. How many of y'all seen that down on Wall Street? Dag, y'all don't get around too much, do you? The hell is this? All right. Give me the next one. Go ahead, read that. What does the charging bull represent? The bull in finance represents optimism and growth. Mm -hmm. The statute on Wall Street represents the same ideas. Those of financial growth and prosperity associated with America, Wall Street, and New York City. Mm -hmm. Now, two years ago, yeah, 2020, 2022, there was the Commonwealth Olympics. Um... The Olympic Games. It's not the Olympics. It's a lower version, a smaller version. But they have 72, listen good, 72 participating nations. Give me the, start at 25 seconds, please. Uh, Alicia, from 25 seconds, we're going to go to three minutes. This was just two years ago. Pay attention. This was in England. Chain makers of the Industrial Revolution were underpaid and overworked. And not only were they responsible for making some of the chains used in the slave trade, but they too were enslaved by their terrible circumstances. Stop! Go back! Everybody missed it! Go back again! Listen, they're talking about feminism, how the white woman was made to make chains, these feminists. Go back to 25 seconds, pay attention. Female chain makers of the Industrial Revolution were underpaid and overworked. And not only were they responsible for making some of the chains used in the slave trade, but they too were enslaved by their terrible Did circumstances. You hear that? White women was used to make the chains during the slave trade. Damn. Damn. That's your white, your family, that's Karen. Go ahead, play on. Not only were they responsible for making some of the chains used in the slave trade, but they too were enslaved by their terrible circumstances. And now, enter the bull. Remember, this is England during the Olympics. As the beat pounds to remind us of the relentless drive of industry, they drag into the Alexander Stadium. A beast, a bull. 10 meters high, heavily armored. Ball, ball. Remember, we're doing the three minute mark, all right? Now, scarred by past hurt and enraged by injustice, the bull breaks free and causes pandemonium. And in a parallel act of emancipation, the women break their own chains. Bulls were baited and sold here in the city century for centuries. And his armored mask features the names of the chain makers embossed upon it from those dark days.
So who now can calm the bull? Not Where we the time she's escaped in her balloon. It's no doubt going to be up to Stella and the Dreamers to try and halt the bull. The Dreamers have stayed. Now, and they notice they get the black woman. They always get the black woman. Go ahead, just play on. They're about to offer compassion to a very scared icon of this city. And all this is symbolic. It's all symbolism in these things. Don't think they just did it. Oh, let's just have a show. No. This all has spiritual, demonic meanings behind it. The black woman can calm Satan. Yeah, okay. She can calm the bull. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Was that it? Uh, oh, real quick, jump to seven minutes, 45 seconds. Y'all can see the rest at home, but it, because it's kind of long. This is the Olympics. Seven minutes, 45 second mark, and go to 810, all right? Go ahead, watch Bins. this. Now they're all praying to the bull. They are bowing, worshiping ball. This was just two years ago away, at the Olympic Games. The theatrical and inspiring open ceremony and these games. Was that it? Now, when y'all see the video in its entirety, one, one group of the uh, Olympic um, athletes wanted to leave. It was Jamaica. Tried to get out of there. They would not let, you got to see it's funny. They would not let them leave. Because they were looking at it and saying, well, what the hell is this, man? And they all had their uh, green and gold and tried to leave. Damn. They said, no, y'all got to stay. Sit down over there. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I had to laugh. So give me Romans chapter 10. So y'all be thinking that that ball has no relevance today. Y'all reading the Bible about ball, Baal. Oh, that's old stuff back then. No, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Stop listening to dumb black Christians. Romans uh, 11, I'm sorry. Romans 11, let's start at 1. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. God has not cast away the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. Go ahead. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Foreknew means from the past, from the time of the Old Testament. Go ahead. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias? Concerning Elias, Elijah. Go ahead. How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets. Because Jezebel was killing all the prophets. Go ahead. And dig down thine altars. Mm -hmm. And I am left alone. Elijah thought he was left alone. Go ahead. And they seek my life. And Elijah said, and they want to kill me. So Paul's quoting this history. Go ahead, but watch this. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. He has reserved 7,000 men which have not bowed the knee. So there's, they are, he was, just like God let Elijah know that there was men that he was unaware of, Paul was using that for his time, which goes for our time today. There are Israelites that are watching online. We've never heard of them. We don't know about them. But they're growing in faith and becoming more and more diligent. Everybody understand that? We don't got to see them. God don't want us to see them. But notice it says the image of Baal. So back then, it was, the image was then, you got the image now. That's what I was showing you with Wall Street. That's why I showed you the Olympics two years ago. The image, the meaning, the symbolism is still here today. Read on, verse 5. Verse 5. Even so then, at this present time See that? also. At this present time also, go ahead. There is a remnant according to the election of grace. So just like God was letting Elijah know, the Lord is letting Paul know to tell us there's a remnant according to the election of grace. Right. You ain't going to see everybody. Okay, now watch this. Romans 1. Verse 
And let's start at verse 23. Romans chapter 1, verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Stop. Go back. Read it again. Because we might not understand. We're going to go through this slow. Read. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Put the corruptible man on the screen. So this is the corruptible man right here. That the world thinks is the son of God. The That's this. the corruptible man right there. That's Caesar Borgia. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Read again, Yuri. And they cha and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds. Stop. And to birds. Give me the next one. You might go, what do you mean, and to birds? Right there on your dollar bill. That is the symbol of the United States of America, symbolizing our uh, freedom. It says, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. Okay? Uh, peace, and uh, go back so I can read it. Go back. The olive branch represents peace. The arrows represent war, because they destroy people through peace. Come with peace, but war is in their heart. Give me the next image you just showed. That's this symbol. That's the image of and to birds. Go back real quick. I'm sorry. Go back. And if you notice above the eagle's head, you got 13 stars in the shape of the hexagram. That is what they call the Magen David or the star of Molech. Right there. So go back to verse 23, Yuri. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. And to birds. Wait, wait, wait. Give me, put the image. Put them to man, right? That's corruptible man. Go ahead. And wait a minute. And to birds. Read on. And four-footed beasts. And four-footed beasts. That's that bull. That's Bell right there in New York City. Four-footed beasts. Read. And creeping things. Now you might go creeping things. That deals with insects. What are you? Wait a no, no, no. Give me the next one. If you look on your dollar bill. There's spider webs all through the dollar bill. Those are webs. And one of, the, one of your great superheroes that many of your kids run around work, give me the next one, is Spider-Man. It all goes back to ancient Egypt. This is all foreign gods. Damn. Bishop, can yes. you go back to that picture real quick? Going into what you said about the birds. Go back to the bird. Back, back where the spider webs were. Because, Bishop, you touched on this before. The image of the spider web. Go back. On the dollar. Right. Yes, sir. Zoom in. Zoom in as close as you can. Go down, 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 down. See right there in the corner. Right, right. there. Right there. Mm -hmm. That's an owl. Yep. So that's more of going back to what you're saying, mm -hmm. Bishop, about those birds yep. and the symbolism. Yep. Exactly. All right. Go give me the next image. Yes. Zoom in so we can see what we're looking at, that whole top section. Now I want to see the words so we know what we're reading, too. Read that, Yuri. Semiramis, son Tammuz, was said to be a minotaur, half man, half bull. Uh-huh. Right, lower, right, lower it so we can see. They got, that's Tammuz right there. A minotaur. Now, give me that, Yuri, because I forgot where this in the book of Ezekiel about the black women that was crying for him. Chapter 8. Give me that real quick. Ezekiel. Chapter 8, verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. So you had Israelite women weeping for Tammuz. Because when you read the history, if you ever get the book um, by Alexander Hislop, Reverend Alexander Hislop, um, what's the name of it? Uh, the Two Babylons. He goes into the history on how when Tammuz was born, as a young boy, he was killed by a wild boar. And they had, Ceramicus' mama had said that Tammuz was the reincarnation 
of her dead husband, Nimrod. So around the age eight or ten, a boar mauled him and killed him. So now read it again, Yuri. Put it on the screen. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. They was weeping for Tammuz. They said Tammuz was the son of God. Okay. So let's go back to the image again. I mean, the bottom half, I want that bull with the bottom set. Yes, read that. When Moses was on the holy mount, receiving the commandments from God, the children of Israel commissioned Aaron to build a golden calf for them. Give me the next image. Top section. The god Molech Chamash was half bull, half man. You read about Molech, like in the book of Amos, you read about Molech. But it's, very, it's the same Baal. It's still Satan. It's all satanic. Ready to give me the next one? Read that. Many ancient religions worshipped some type of bull. In India, they will starve. But that, fat, that cow will walk around fat as hell. You can, uh, if you touch the cow, you hit the cow, stab the cow, you go to jail. You go to prison because they say the cow is holy. That all goes back to Baal worship. Everybody understand that? Read the bottom of that. Raise it up. Even the term Indian, South Asian phrase, sacred cow, indicates the infiltration of this worship. Right. This infiltration is Baal. So, Judges. Back to the book of Judges. We ain't done in Judges yet. We just had to lay that down there so y'all got your, your mind right. Judges chapter 9, now we are in verse 1, Officer Yuri. Judges chapter 9, verse 1. And Abimelech, the son of Jerubabel, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren, and communed with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying... Stop! So remember, Abimelech was the son of a concubine that lived in Shechem, Okay. Remember verse 31, 831, and his concubine that was in Shechem. She also bare him a son whose name he called Abimelech. So although Abimelech was the son of Gideon, they, his, all his 70 sons, there was a, they had a different mother. Abimelech came from a different mother. Everybody understand that? All right. So 91 again. And Abimelech, the son of Jerubabel, went Jerubabel to... Jerubabel is who, brothers? Gideon. Gideon. Very good. Go ahead went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren. So now he goes to his mother's brothers, go ahead. And commune with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, uh -huh. saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbabel, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. So understand what this dude Abimelech is doing. He goes to his mother's family and says, hey, is it better for Gideon's 70 sons to reign over you or for me? Remember, I'm your brother. We got the same mama. Everybody understand what's going on, right? All right, let's read on. Verse 3. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, he is our brother. They all, all the mother's family said, well, Abimelech is our brother, flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone. Go ahead. What verse you at? Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Barith. Mm -hmm. wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. So with the money they gave Abimelech, he hired some evil thugs. That's what he did. Some evil Negroes. Go ahead. And he went unto his father's house at Oprah and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbabel. So I'm putting those images up right there. Read it again. And he went unto his father's house at Oprah and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubal. Give me the next image. Go ahead, next image. Keep going. Go ahead, read. Being three score and ten persons uh -huh. upon one stone, notwithstanding yet, Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubal, was left, for he hid himself. So 
Jotham hid himself. Jotham was the youngest of Gideon's 70 sons. Go ahead, next image. So he was hiding. He saw what was going on. He was hiding himself. Come on with the image. He hid himself. Go back to the beginning of those images where they was chasing him through the streets. So they was getting all the 70 sons. Remember, this is Abimelech getting them. He hired those dudes, and it was killing all of Gideon's sons. They didn't give a damn about their daddy's side. Everybody see what's going on so far, right? I need to understand that y'all with me. Okay. Um, you're in verse 6, right? Yes, sir. Judges chapter 9 and verse 6. And all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. So now they made, they got rid of Gideon's sons, except who, brothers? Except Jotham. Jotham hid himself. He was the young one. He hid himself. But they got all the other 69, kill them. And they, all, they chopped all their heads off on one stone. Chop, 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 chop. Where you at, Yuri? I'm sorry. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim. So now Jotham, when they told him, all your brothers is dead, he goes up to Mount Gerizim. Gerizim. Read it again, Yuri. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim. And lifted up his voice. He and, yelled. He yelled from the top of his voice. Go ahead. And cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. So he's yelling from the top of the mountain. He wanted to make sure Abimelech and all his family can hear what he's about to say. Give me the next image. There was three images there. Very good. Verse 8 now. Go ahead. Verse 8. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, rain thou over us. Stop right there. Read it again. Read it again. The trees went forth. Stop. Write this down. The trees represent Israel. Read again, Yuri. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree. Write this down. The olive tree is Gideon. The olive tree is Gideon. Go ahead. Rain thou over us. Rain thou over us. Go ahead. But the olive tree. Wait, 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 wait. Give me Judges 8, verse 22 and 23. Let's go back. Judges, chapter 8, verse 22. The men of Israel said unto Gideon. What did they say to Gideon? Rule thou over us. Be a king. Go ahead. Both thou and thy son. You and your sons in consecutive order can be our kings. Go ahead. And thy son's son also. Mm -hmm. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Go ahead. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. So Herod Gideon said, he said, I'm not going to be your king. My sons ain't going to be your king. The Lord shall rule over you. Go back to Judges 9 again. Verse 8 again. I want to start it there again. Judges chapter 9, verse 8. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign thou over us. They said to Gideon, reign thou over us. Go ahead. But the olive tree said unto them. But Gideon said unto them. Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man? And go to be promoted over the trees? Should I be king over the rest of Israel? That was his question. Go ahead. And the tree said to the fig tree. And the tree said to... Now the fig tree and the vine, write this down. Fig tree and vine are Gideon's sons. Fig tree and vine are Gideon's sons. Everybody got that? You wrote that down? Yep. Lava, you got it? All right. Read it again. And the trees said to the fig tree... Come thou and reign over us. Mm -hmm. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? So then the son said, Should we be king over you? No. Go ahead. Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. Mm -hmm. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine with cheer God and man? And go to be promoted over the trees. So nobody wanted to be king of Gideon's line. Because Gideon said, don't be king. God shall be the king, the leader, the Lord of Israel. Everybody <laughs> understand that, right? Watch this. 
Verse 14. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, come thou and reign over us. So the bramble is a thistle. Can you look up a uh, uh, thistle? T-H-I-S-T. I want an image. Thistle or bramble image. Yeah, you can put it on the screen. This is a thistle tree, which is a bramble. It pricks you. It can hurt you. Okay, everybody understand that? So go back, Officer Yuri. Yes, sir. Verse 14. Then said all the trees unto the bramble. Then said Israel unto Abimelech. Abimelech, write that down, is the bramble. Go ahead. Come thou and reign over us. Be our king. Go ahead. And the bramble said unto the trees, if in truth... Ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble. That's for, pay close attention. This, remember, this is Jotham screaming on the top of the mountain. He's giving a parable, also a prophecy. Read that again. If not, and if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Let fire come out of Abimelech. And devour the cedars, the trees of Lebanon. Read on. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, and that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbaal and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands. Notice what verse 16 says. If ye have done truly sincerely, remember, he's yelling on a mountain. If ye have done truly sincerely, and that you have made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Gideon, that's Jerubbabel, and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at, uh, I don't want to jump too far ahead. What verse was that? That verse was 16. 16. Read the next verse. Verse 17. For my father fought for you. My and father beat the Midianites for you to make you free. Go ahead. And adventured his life far mm -hmm. and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. Get chapter 8 again, verse 28. Let's read that again in case we forgot the thought. Judges chapter 8, verse 28. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more. And the country was in quietness 40 years in the days of Gideon. All right, let's go back to verse not chapter 9, verse 17 again. For my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. Go ahead. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, three score and ten persons, upon one stone and have made Abimelech king over the men of Shechem. Because wait, 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 wait. And have made Abimelech, read it again. Excuse read. me. And have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant. Mm, the son of his maidservant. That's the concubine. Go ahead. King over the men of Shechem because he is your brother. Because he is your brother. Chapter 9, verse 3. Come up to verse 3 again. Verse 3. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem. All these words. And their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech. For they said... He is our brother. All right. Now we got the thought. Our thought is good. Let's go back to jump down to verse 19. You was at? Yes, sir. Judges chapter 9, verse 19. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbaal and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. Mm -hmm. But if not, but if not, let fire. And if you didn't deal right with Gideon, Jerubbabel, and his sons, read it again. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech. Let fire come out from Abimelech. And devour the men of Shechem. And devour the men of Shechem. In the house of Milo. Uh -huh. And let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. Go ahead. And Jotham ran away. And Jotham, give me the image. Come on, brothers. Go ahead, read it again. And Jotham ran away. Jotham ran away. Because after he yelled on the mountain, he had to get the hell out of Dodge. Read it again. And Jotham ran away. Keep, keep going to the image. That's right. Go ahead. And fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of, of Abimelech, his brother. Read that again. You messed something up. And Jotham ran away and fled 
and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. He knew Abimelech was going to kill him. He knew Abimelech was going to kill him. So he ran. Was that all the images of him running? Okay, read on. Verse 22. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit. Now verse 23 is the key. Verse 23 is the key to the parable that Jotham gave. Pay very close attention. Read. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. Uh-oh. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. That the so wait, 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 wait. I want you to understand that. God sent an evil spirit on Abimelech between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. Now remember, give me 1 Samuel 16, 14. 1 Samuel 16, 14. Some of y'all catching on, but I know some of y'all are slow. It's all right, though. I'm slow, too. Read that. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. The Spirit of the Lord departed from King Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord. An evil spirit from who? From the Lord troubled him. Mm, so the Lord does send evil spirits on people. 1 John 2, 11, please. 1 John chapter 2, verse 11. 1 John chapter 2, verse 11. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Darkness is that evil spirit that will blind your eyes. Brothers, I'm going to... Y'all can put that on the screen. That evil spirit that comes on men. When we, was, when we set up, um, when the Lord had us set up IUIC, remember the first brother that evil spirit came on yep. was Barack Shaw. Yep. And he took a whole group, I think he took all Virginia with him. All Virginia. all Virginia. And they set up a school. And an evil spirit went up in there. The next guy was <laughs> Sakya. Remember, he was a deacon with us. Yep. He set up a school and an evil spirit went up in there. After that, you had an Ephraimite named Archangel. Yep. He got all Northern Kingdom, started teaching that we're Canaanites. What the hell is this? And the Lord sent an evil spirit there. Then you had uh, Uzziah. Right. 2018. 2018. He left, set up something, the Lord sent an evil spirit there. Uh, Judah Mack yep. left up out of here, set his own thing up. The Lord sent an evil spirit. So, y'all going to see where this history is going. Go on back to Judges 9. Read 23 again. Yes, sir. Judges chapter 9, verse 23. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt, dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Y'all see this? You cannot get honor and respect through treachery. If you ain't loyal to the men of God, you think the men that you beguile to go with you is going to be loyal to you? Oh, no. That ain't going to work. It ain't. The Lord going to send an evil spirit. That's what I'm trying to show y'all. Because all the names I mentioned, those one, two, three, four, five names I mentioned, when they set things up, that evil spirit caused them to go at each other's throats, start hating each other. Let's read on, Yuri. Verse 24, that the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbaal might come, mm -hmm. and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brother. There is a universal law. I'm going to give you that law now. A, when, when, remember in Romans 7, hey, give me that Romans 7, uh, uh, I think it's 12, about the law of spiritual. 7 and 7. Is that it? Romans chapter 7, verse 14. 14, thank you, thank you, thank you. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. Most people read that, don't understand what it means. Go ahead. But I am carnal, I'm carnal. sold under sin. We all got to sin nature, all of us. Sold under sin means we all got to sin nature. But the part I want you to understand is the law is spiritual. Genesis 9 and 6. I'm going to give you an example. Genesis 9 and 6. 
Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. That's a universal law. You reap what you sow. You do evil, evil will follow you. I hope everybody, you people think, I'm going to do evil, nothing going to happen to me. <laughs> Even when the apostle Paul was killing Israel, remember the Lord said, I, I've chosen him and I showed him what great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Paul knew he had to suffer. He knew he had to suffer. He knew that there would still be a judgment. Although we are forgiven, that law is spiritual. It is divine. It will still apply. Out in the world, we brothers and sisters commit all acts of whoredom. They, they catch syphilis, gonorrhea, genital warts, come in the truth and say, Lord, heal me, Lord, heal me. You got your judgment. That was your judgment. You have to live with that now. You have to live with that. God's law is spiritual. You sin, there's a judgment for these sins. Where we at, Yuri? You'll go back to Judges 9, Bishop. No, no, give me Deuteronomy 19, 16. Deuteronomy 19, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 16. Watch this. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong. That's called perjury. You are a false witness. You're going to testify falsely against someone. Go ahead. Then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. Mm -hmm. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness, and hath testified falsely against his brother. Watch this. Then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. Mm. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. God's law is when you lie to try to harm somebody, to get someone incarcerated or killed, yep. that judgment is the fall on you. Yep. The law is spiritual. Remember with Susanna. They said, oh, Susanna uh, was committing uh, adultery with these two young men. Or a young man, I forgot, it was, one, it was one young man. And they said, she should die. And when they found out that they was lying, those two men got put to death. And they were elders of Israel. The law is spiritual. We don't. Verse 20. And those which remain shall hear and fear, and shall henceforth Commit no more any such evil among you. Mm -hmm. and so thine, that's supposed to teach everybody a lesson. Go ahead. And thine eye shall not pity, mm -hmm. but life shall go for life. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. That's right. Let's go on back. Judges 9. Start at 24 again. Yes, sir. Judges chapter 9, verse 24. That the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Jerubbaal that's seventy mm -hmm. might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother, mm -hmm. which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem which aided him in the killing of his brethren. That's right. Go ahead. And the men of Shechem set liars. Hey, hey give me that. Uh, I think it's Colossians three twenty five, if I'm not mistaken. No, Colossians three twenty five. About you reap what you sow or something like that. Let me look at it. Colossians 3.25, read that. Colossians chapter 3, verse 25. Well, pay attention, write this down. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. Abimelech didn't understand that. Some Israelites don't understand that. They believe that they can be traitors. They can hate and despise and try to harm their brother, try to get their brother thrown in jail, and it's going to be no spiritual repercussion. Oh, how wrong you are. Read it again, verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of person. Now Galatians 1. I'm in Galatians 6, verse 7. I'm sorry. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. 
God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You know why? Because the law is spiritual. You reap what you sow. You're not going to mock God by doing evil and get away with it scot-free. If not, and as we read on in Judges, the judgment didn't come the next month or even the next year or two. Time was there. That's all these brothers online that was, did much evil to us. Oh, this time, the Lord said, just wait, just wait. He already broke a lot of them up. Go back to Judges, Jerry. Verse 24. Yep. Judges chapter 9, verse 24. That the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbaal might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountain. So they said, uh, give me the image. Yes, put it up. Go ahead. Read it again, Yuri. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains. And they robbed all that came along that way by them. And it was told Abimelech. So they set traps on the mountains. Anybody they wanted to get um, Jotham. But whoever got caught up in their traps, they robbed them. Go ahead. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went out into the field and gathered their vineyards and trod the grapes. What verse you at? Verse 27. Read 26 again. Yes, sir. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. So this guy was one of, get verse 4 again to show you who this guy Gaal was. Judges chapter 9, verse 4. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Barith. What did he do with it? Wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. Vain and light persons. Remember, he hired certain men. Now go back to verse 26. Verse 26. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went out into the fields and gathered their vineyards, and trod the grapes, and made merry, and went into the house of their God. Remember, the house of their God was Baal, Barith. The symbol was the bull. Read again. And they went out into the fields, and gathered their vineyards. There should be more than one image, uh, Elisha. Go ahead. And trod the grapes, and made merry, and went into the house of their God, and did eat and drink, and cursed Abimelech. So while they was making merry, they was cursing Abimelech. Remember, these was Abimelech's boys. The hell is these are the same men that helped Abimelech become king. But remember, God sent an evil spirit there. So now they're cursing the same man that they made king that they used to kill Gideon's 70 sons. Damn. Obviously, what's going on here? I gave you, there was five images, Elisha, I believe. Go ahead, verse 28 now. Verse 28. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech? And who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is not he the son of Jerubbaal? G yeah, give me the next, yeah, start from there, yes. There should be about three images, black and white. Go ahead. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech? And who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is not he the son of Jerubbaal and Zebul, his officer? Serve the men of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for why should we serve him? And would to God, this people were under my hand. See that? Now it goes, and would to God, this people were under my hand. Go ahead. Then would I remove Abimelech. And he said to Abimelech, increase thine army and come out. So now his homeboy want to fight him. He said, hey, you, we set you up as king, but why should you be the leader? You know how black people are? Yep. I think I should be a leader. Yep. Right, right, right. That's the evil spirit. You was treacherous against righteous men yep. and thought God was going to use you to set something great up. Wow. No. That's right. That evil spirit is there and is breaking things apart. Woo! What verse you at, Yuri? We have verse 30. We're in verse 30. All right, listen, did you show those three black and white images? Okay, go ahead. Verse 30. And when Zebul, the ruler of the city, 
heard the words of Gaal, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled. Mm -hmm. And he sent messengers unto Abimelech privily, saying... Show me those three images again. Those are the three images I wanted to there. That's, I should have put it there. Go ahead. And he sent messengers unto Abimelech privily, saying, Behold, Gaal, the son of Ebed. So remember, Abimelech sitting as king. Now they go to, do go to Abimelech and telling him what the dude of Shechem is saying, what Gaal is saying. Go ahead. Behold, Gaal, the son of Ebed, and his brethren be come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against thee. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, up by night, thou and the people that is with thee, and lie in wait in the field. Give me the field images. Field images. It should be about three or four. Three. Read on. And it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early and set upon the city. And behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against thee, then mayest thou do to them as thou shalt find occasion. Mm, 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 mm. And okay. Abimelech rose up, and all the people that were with him by night, and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. So they had four companies. They're all in the field. All the armies are in the field now ready to fight. Homeboy against homeboy. Go ahead. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And Abimelech rose up, and the people that were with him from lying in wait. Mm -hmm. And when Gaal saw the people... Now give me the next scenes of them fighting. Yep, start there. This should be about four or five, three, three images. Four, four. Go ahead. And when Gaal saw the people, he said to Zebul, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. And Zebul said unto him, Thou seest the shadow of the mountains as if they were men. And Gaal spake again and said, See, there come people down by the middle of the land, and another company come along by the plain of Meoninim. Then says Zebal unto him, Where is now thy mouth? Wherewith thou saidest, Who is Abimelech? You see that? Where is your mouth now? All that bull crap you was talking, Damn. say it now. That's Abimelech talking to him now. Go ahead. Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? Is not this the people that thou hast despised? Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. Fight. Come on, fight. Go ahead. And Gaal went out before the men of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him. And many were overthrown and wounded. So Abimelech is winning. He's whooping this dude. Go ahead. Even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dwelt at Aruma, and Zebul thrust out Gaal and his brethren, and they should not that they should not dwell in Shechem. That they should not dwell in Shechem. Read. And it came to pass on the morrow that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech, and he took, and he took the people and divided them into three companies, and laid wait in the field, and looked, and behold. The people were come forth out of the city, and he rose up against them and smote them. Mm -hmm. And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day, and he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city, mm. and sowed it with salt. And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that, they entered into a hold of the house of the god Berith. So they, the rest of these guys ran into the house of their god Baal Berith. There should be uh, three images there, three, yep. They all ran, in, where they had, they was, remember they worshipped the bull, Baal. They ran into the house, the temple. Read on. Verse 47, and it was told Abimelech, that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people that were with him. Watch this. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bow from the trees uh -huh. and took it and laid it on his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, What ye have seen me do, make haste, and do as I have done. So he told all the people, cut down some trees, cut down some wood, put it on your shoulder, and follow me. You, it, got, you got those images, uh, Elisha? There should be about four, five. So this is what they did. They all 
got wood, they got the trees cut down, the branches. Read on. Let's see what they do with this. Verse right? 49. And all the people likewise cut down every man his boat and followed Abimelech and put them to the hold and set the hold on fire upon them. So they set the temple on fire where they was, all the men was at worshiping, right? So that all the men of the tower of Shechem died. Also, mm. about a thousand men and women. A thousand men and women died in Baal Berith. Okay? Then went Abimelech to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city. There was a strong tower in the city. Go ahead. And thither fled all the men and women and all they of the city and shut it to them and got them up to the top of, to, of the tower. Mm -hmm. And Abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it. And not went, yet, Elisha, not yet. Take that down. Yes, leave it right there, God. And Abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it and went hard unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire. Mm -hmm. And a certain woman... Here come now, Elisha, now put it up. Read this right here. And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head mm. and all to break his skull. So a woman came and threw a big piece of rock out and it fell on Abimelech and break his skull. Hmm. Go ahead. Then he called hastily unto the young man, his armor bearer, and said unto him, Draw thy sword and slay me. Hurry up and kill me! Go ahead. That men say not of me, a woman slew him. I don't want it to be said a woman killed me. I'm a warrior! You know how humiliating it is a woman threw a rock on me and killed me. Go ahead. <laughs> and his young man thrust him through and he died. Mm. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Mm -hmm. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father, in slaying his 70 brethren. Mm. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their heads. And upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbaal. So the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbaal, came on them. Go back to Judges uh, 9, verse 20. Jump back up to verse 20 so we remember. Judges chapter 9, verse 20. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech. Remember, Abimelech was setting fire everywhere. Go ahead. And devour the men of Shechem. He killed all the men of Shechem. Go ahead. And the house of Milo. And the house of Milo. And let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. Because a woman threw a pot, or not a pot, a rock, and killed him. So his curse came to pass. Now, after reading that history, hmm. now we know why traitors can never be trusted. Right. Whether they be in the faith, quote unquote, or out the faith, you can never trust a traitor, right. male or female, That's right. That's right. husband or wife. Oh, you thought the Abimelech code didn't apply to a spouse. Now, he or she, whether it's male or female, I'll be neutral. He or she that betrayed their baby daddy or betrayed their baby mama. Now they got you or you on the rebound. Listen to good. Think about it. They was not loyal to baby daddy or baby mama. You think now they in here, they're going to be loyal to you. Remember, these men and women betrayed. I'm I ain't talking about if the baby mama was a crackhead or baby daddy was beaten. I'm not talking about situations like that. I'm talking about she had a good man or you had a good wife. That's what I'm talking about. But you decided to hell with you. I think I can do better. So you betrayed your spouse. Now you're sitting here, I'm single, I'm single. And you marry her or she marry you. And you was never loyal to the spouse you had. They're not loyal, they wasn't loyal to that spouse. 
They're not going to be loyal to you. They ain't loyal to them kids, and they sure as hell ain't loyal to the Most High God. Their God is their crotch. Who make me feel good? I want to go there. Damn. Tell you. So the Abimelech Code, write this down. Preeminence, manipulation, and put a space in a line. Put preeminence and put a space. Preeminence is one. Manipulation is two. That's M-A-N-I-P-U-L-A-T-I-O-N. Manipulation. Number three is hatred. Number four is murder. So now we're going to talk about them four things. Preeminence, Galatians 5.26. Of course, Paul does discuss it. Christ discusses it through Paul for us. You're, are you with me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Vain glory is what Abimelech had. I should be king. I should be the leader. Brothers are being warned. Don't have that spirit. Read it again. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, mm -hmm. provoking one another, envying one another. Provoking one another to evil and envying one another. When you are jealous of... Abimelech was jealous of Gideon and his sons. And notice, rather than set himself up as king, he said, I can't be king as long as Gideon's sons is there. Because everybody respected Gideon's sons. He said, I got to get rid of them. That's how it is in the Israelite community today. I can't shine as long as IUIC is around teaching them commandments, trying to show everybody to live the proper life in God's laws. We can't be the head track camp, the head congregation. We can't be the HNIC. So we're going to mock them. We're going to try to fight them on the streets. This is the same spirit. Give me Philippians 2 and 3. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. A lot of us come from the world. All of us come from the world. And some of us have a spirit of strife and vainglory. I think I should be, I think I, 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 me, 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 me. What about me? Read that again. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, uh -huh. but in lowliness of mind. In lowliness of mind, respect one another. Go ahead. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look at the good qualities in your brother, in your sister, in your neighbor. What are the good qualities? I'm sure you, we can all point out something bad. But Christ said to do what? Yuri? Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Meaning look at their good qualities. Learn from their good qualities. Go ahead. Look not every man on his own thing. Look not every man on their own thing. Me, 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 me. Go ahead. But every man also on the things of others. Look on what others have. And not in the spirit of envy, but in the spirit of admiration. That's something black people, Latin people, we can't admire one another. We got to tear, tear each other down. Give me 3 John 9. 3 John, verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence who among them. Who loveth to have the preeminence. Go ahead, read again. I, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Do y'all know that John was one of the apostles? Diotrephes, or Diotrephes, however you pronounce it, would not receive John and the rest of the leadership. I want you to think about it. Who set di Diotrephes up? Those same apostles. But what the Negro did 
was once he got situated in his seat, he wants to be called spiritual. I don't call me father. I'm your daddy. I'm the man. I told all of you. But no, no, no. He waited till the apostles set him up in that position. Then he got niggerish. Then he got disrespectful. That's the same thing that happened in the, 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 men, name, the yeah. names of the men I just mentioned. Yes. Bishop, mm. I mean, every single man, Bishop, can I set up? Every single one of them betrayed him. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them turned against him. That's what he's talking about here. That's the same thing here. Every single one of them. Now they think that now all of them claim that they're more than him. Every single one of them betrayed him. That's what happened in 2018. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Read that again, Yuri. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Me? Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words. Prating against us with malicious, talking S-H. All the apostles ain't nobody. I'm greater than them. But he waited till he got that seat. We don't. And not content therewith, neither doeth he himself receive the brethren. He wouldn't receive none of the brothers that wanted to visit. Go ahead. And forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. He was kicking people out to church that wanted to visit the apostles. Okay, if you go see James and Peter and them, to hell with you, don't come back now, you hear? That's how evil this dude was. That's the spirit of Israel today. Go ahead. Beloved. Follow not that which is evil. Because that was evil. Go ahead. But that which is good. He that doeth good is of God. But he that doeth evil hath not seen These God. These evil men have not seen God. Okay. Now, manipulation was number two. Second Peter 2.14. Remember how Abimelech, he, he said, I'm your brother. Remember, we all got the same mama. Yep. Join me. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery. Having eyes full of adultery. And that cannot cease from sin. They can't cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls. The word beguiling means tricking, deceiving unstable souls. Deceiving unstable souls. Meaning souls that don't study. Souls that are not sincere. And there's a lot of men and women in there like that. Go ahead. In heart. They have exercise with covetous practices. Mm -hmm. Cursed children. The Bible says those are cursed children. Just because you are in here with fringes and border of blue, we saw that in 2018. They all had fringes and border blue. Evil men, evil women, and evil children. Message. Did all that evil say, oh, I'm still in the truth? No. The Bible says you are, what does it say, Yuri, the bottom part? What are they? Cursed children. The Bible says cursed children. Read. Which have forsaken the right way mm -hmm. and are gone astray, following the way of Baal, mm -hmm. the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. So now the next thing under Abimelech, he had a spirit of hatred. Give me Matthew 5, 21. Three. Yeah, this is the third one, hatred. I told you I wrote the four down. You didn't write it down? No. Third one, hatred. Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. The judgment is God's judgment. Go ahead. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause. Did Abimelech have a cause to be angry with Gideon's sons? No. He had no reason. Just like the men that we mentioned. Yep. There's no sin any of those men can say, oh, they committed adultery against me. Oh, they robbed me. They stole. There's nothing. But that spirit of hatred was there. That me, 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 me spirit was there. Read it again, Yuri. I'm sorry. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause. Meaning for no reason. Go ahead. Shall be in danger of the judgment. Shall be in danger of the judgment. God's judgment. Go ahead. And whosoever shall say to his brother, recall. Meaning thou fool, thy vain fellow. 
shall be in danger of the council. The council is man's council. All we can do is say, hey, bro, that ain't right. You got to go. Or do, do this and that. Go ahead. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Right. Meaning if you continue, let's say you come back, but you continue with that spirit of anger. It says, then you're in danger of what? Hellfire. Hellfire. That's that lake of fire. When Christ returned. That's that lake of fire. That torment. Hey, give me that in 2 Ezra 9 and 12. This is what it's talking about. You got me, Yuri? Yes, sir. 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 12. Mm -hmm. The same must know it after death by pain. So you ain't going to escape. You're not going to escape. Give me uh, chapter 7 now. I forgot what verse it is. Mm. Bear with me a second. Verse 56. Second Ezra 7, verse 56. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 56. For while we lived and committed iniquity. Committed iniquity, sin, anger, hatred. We considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. That after death is that fire when Christ returned. No, you can put it on the screen. Nobody's going to escape with that spirit of hatred, a spirit of anger. <coughs> Where we at, Yuri? Matthew 5. Oh, so the, the fourth one was murder. 1 John 3, 15. Because <coughs> it always leads to that. Give me that, 1 John 3, 15. 1 John chapter 3, <coughs> verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Because that it always starts like that spirit of hatred. Then it leads to the murder. Read it again. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. No murderer gets the kingdom. No murderer gets... Give me that Revelation 22. I think it's 22 about outside the gate. Mm. Revelation. Chapter, Start at 14, Revelation yeah. twenty two fourteen. 14. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. <laughs> Blessed are they that do his commandments. That's right. That they may have right to the tree of life mm -hmm. and may enter in through the gates into the city. We all want to enter the gates to New Jerusalem. Go ahead. For without our dogs. Outside New Jerusalem are dogs. And sorcerers. Mm -hmm. And whoremongers. Mm -hmm. And murderers. That's the brother and sister that hates their neighbor. Go ahead. And idolaters. That's right. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Lies. You ever notice backdoor marriages always have an evil spirit in the midst you ever see brothers and sisters have a secret back door, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Then they come together and there's an evil spirit there. Well, I'm sure that's, that's the same spirit that happened with Amnon and Tamar. Damn. Give me that, 2 Samuel 13, 11. Your back door marriages. You did it the wrong way. You didn't get, you never proved each other. But she looked so good and he was so, so handsome. So you got together, slop and spit and sweat all over the place, You're sharing juices. Now you get married. We're going to get married, and you don't know each other. 2 Samuel 13 and 11. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 11. And when she had brought them unto him to now this, eat. This is uh, Tamar. Fill in, fill in case you don't know this history. David had a daughter named Tamar. And he had a son named Amnon from another woman. Amnon, they were, brought, they were what they call stepbrother and sister. Amnon was in love with his stepsister. He loved her. She was good looking. And she was a virgin. So he was trying to figure out a way to have sex with her. And he had a crafty little weasel friend that said, hey, make believe you're sick. And ask your father to bring, to allow your stepsister to bring some food. That's how you get her. So Amnon followed that evil counsel. So verse 11. Yes, sir. And when she had brought them unto him to start eat. Study 10, study 10. I'm verse sorry. 10. And Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber 
that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her. He grabbed her. And said unto her, come, lie with me, my sister. Hey, hey, sis, have sex with me. Have sex with me. Hey! Go ahead. And she answered him, nay, my brother. She said, hell no. Go ahead. Do not force me. Hey, don't rape me. Do not rape me. Go ahead. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. Hey, hey, give me the law on rape in case there's some brothers in the back that don't know it. Deuteronomy 22. Get real quick. We're coming back here, Yuri. Rape. You got camps out there that say rape is good. Rape is sanctioned by God. What the hell is this? You got some evil spirits out there. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25. Uh -huh. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. Now, people try to be slick and say, well, well, look, look, look. It says she was betrothed. She was engaged. That's why he got put to death. Read on. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. Mm -hmm. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. Mm -hmm. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. So that's the law of raping a engaged woman. Read the next verse now. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin. Now you find a virgin. Go ahead. Which is not betrothed. She's not engaged to nobody. And lay hold on her and lie with her. And they be found. And they be found, meaning it was consensual. They be found. Go ahead. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. So the judge, one of the judgments says you got to pay 50 shekels of silver for that wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Go ahead. And she shall be his wife. She shall be his wife. Go ahead. Because he hath humbled her. Here it comes. He may not put her away all his days. If she's a demon. You could not get rid of her. That was the judgment. You had to stay with that, that demon. I was going to say some other words, but I don't want to be too. I didn't want, I didn't want to say that, Lava. She might be a nigga, a real nigga. And you couldn't put her away. Going back now. But now remember, this is brother and sister. Where we at, Yuri? I'll read verse 12 again, sir. Go ahead. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 12. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Mm -hmm. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. So she says, speak to our father. Ask dad, can you be with me? She knew it, Dave. David would have said, hell no. She was trying to get out of it. Go ahead. How be it? He would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. He raped her. Go ahead. Then Amnon hated her. Wait, 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 wait. Read that part again. Then Amnon hated her. After he got the cookies. After he got it. It said what? Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. With great hatred. Go ahead. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. Get the hell out of here. The spirit of hatred came in. Right, get an Uber, go home. And that's what happened with a lot of you backdoor marriages. You get together under false pretenses of sex. Then when you get together, get married, you hate her. You can't stand her or she can't stand you. We've seen it time. Have we not seen this over and over? Say, bro, you got to, that's your wife. That's the judgment in Deuteronomy 22. God speak. It's not that. It's not that they hate just each other. They hate the leadership. Like we did something wrong. Mm -hmm. We weren't there when y'all uh, consummated y'all wickedness. It, Damn. Yeah, in a parking lot. Right. Be asking for, can y'all counsel us? No. Did you ask for counsel when you wanted to put your pecker in her, uh, well, uh, what you call her for JJ? You ain't ask us a damn thing. Now you want counsel. Go sit your behind down somewhere. So now, I mentioned about treachery in the faith. Acts 20, 28. 
Christ told Paul to warn us for three years about this thing. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers mm -hmm. to feed the church of God. So we are instructed to feed the church of God. Go ahead. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Mm -hmm. For I know this. Watch this. That after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Come on. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Where did we read in verse 30? We read somebody that did that. Anybody remember the name? Read, say, say it out loud. Diotrephes did this. Read 30 again. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. And as true as it was back then, guess what? It's true today. Brother came in and said, hey, the Sabbath does not begin in the evening. It begins at sunrise. And a lot of dumb brothers and dumb sisters ran up and followed that brother. And what are they doing today? Nothing. Evil spirit came in. Everybody gone. Everybody separated. Everybody separated. Everybody gone. That's the law of spiritual. From there. 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen. No, read 31. I'm sorry. We didn't read 31. Verse 31. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So Paul was warning for three years before he left. You had sisters saying to us, can y'all stop talking about what happened? Right. The Bible says he warned them three years. And here comes a dumb woman. Can y'all stop talking about it? Now? No, Hell we ain't going to stop talking about it. With that, we ain't going to stop talking about because we're trying to help your dumb, ignorant behind. Right. <laughs> Who gets pulled away? Then you want to. Then you get a uh, uh, train ran. Uh, 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 let me let me see. If I want to say that. Yeah. There's a camp that was running a choo choo train on on a sister. Damn. I ain't gonna put the camp on Front Street, but I could if I wanted to. Ran a train on the sister. Damn. Damn. Double D. What do they call that? A uh, DP. Double. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Your nasty brothers know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Two men on and one woman. Now she want to come back. No, sis, no, mm -mm. you stay out. Hell stay out no. there. So. <laughs> Those evil spirits don't grow. Men and women that got that type of an evil spirit, they never grow. Second Timothy 3 and 7, please. Thank you. Second Timothy 3 and 7. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You hear what the Bible says? Read it again, Yuri. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh -huh. Now, as Janus and Jambres... That's all I wanted. Yes, sir. So the point, you're always reading the Bible. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of... The, give me that Psalms 119, 142 about the truth. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So the truth is God's law. Go back to 2 Timothy 3, 7. Start at 6. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. There's some of you sisters. Go ahead. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women. Laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. I remember on Passover, everybody, we just had a Passover meal. Brothers out in the, in, in the um, uh, was outside the hotel, he's outside the hotel, talking to a sister. He said he got to go urinate. He goes behind the bush. The damn sister, with fringes and a ball of blue, was so damn horny, she grabbed his frank while he's peeing. You can't make this stuff up. Frank and Bean grabbed it. He's like, what the hell? He didn't push her off, though. He didn't scream. Y'all know what happened next. I ain't even got to tell you that. 
the, the sloppy toppy that happened. After he peed, all on nasty self. Damn. Somebody says, read the verse again. For this is what this God's so talking about. Nasty, lustful women. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. Of course, men, men can spot the nasty sisters. Men, we got, it ain't, what's the word called? Damn. We can spot you. We can, we can smell you. That's a nasty, that's a hoe right there. She's an ex hole trying to make believe she's uh, in the gospel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read it again. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, uh -huh. ever learning. Both of y'all, ever learning. Men and women, ever learning. Read the Bible every Sabbath, every high holy day. Go ahead. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You're never able to come to the knowledge of God's law. Never able to obey. Galatians 5.26. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. Let us not be desirous. We read that already. We read that one already. Give me, um, give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. For there must be also heresies among you. So brothers, sisters, Christ said through Paul, there must be needs, heresies among you. There must, there must happen. You just don't want to be the vessel that it come through. You ever see them brothers that always see something different than leadership? I see something in the Bible. And the leadership ain't on the level that I see it. It happens all the time. And brother, if that's you, you know it's you. Just check yourself before you what? Wreck yourself. You know it's you because it ain't the first time. It's time and time again. I see something. Y'all not on my level. Go ahead. Bishop, and they always want to talk to the young men. That's who they always want to talk to, the right. young Say men. They don't want to talk to leadership. They want to talk to the young men. Mm. One, two, one, two. Your sister said the same thing, too. Really? They yeah, see I, heard a sister, I heard a sister from Miami said she in a higher level than leadership. Okay. That's why Damn. leadership don't want them to do some type of foolishness she was talking about. Those where she type, at? She outside the Thank you. Those type of spirits, let them go. Hallelujah. Go. Did you read uh, 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen? 19? Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. For there must be also heresies among you. Why? That they which are approved. God got approved. He got to test everybody in here. Read it again. For there must be also heresies among you. That they which are approved may be made manifest among you. So those men and women that lasted through 2018, we can look at them and say, okay, he's approved. He was here. Yep. She was here. They didn't budge. Yep. There wasn't a reed shaking in the wind. But guess what? The party ain't over. It's going to happen again. You, you remember the word he used now? I said, God may we prove, we prove that person, right? You remember that verse you went before? Paul said, watch, watch. What I tell you going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. Watch. That's the same thing God is saying. It's there to prove you, to see if you believe what the word is saying. That's right. So, I said that those evil spirits don't grow. Yuri, give me first Peter 2 and 1. Hmm? First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. So in order for you to grow, as men, as women, we all got to lay aside all malice. Can we look up malice? That's not a common black word that we use in our regular speech from day to day. Put it on the screen. Malice, the intention or desire to do evil. Mm. Ill will. Ill will. So that type of a spirit, if it's on you, you got to do moral inventory of yourself. Check yourself. Examine yourself. Do I have a spirit of malice on me towards brother A or sister C? Read. You want synonyms or you want? No, no. It's all right. Yes, they got Y'all got the picture, right? All right, come on. 
First Peter chapter two, verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's look up guile. We don't use that word in modern day speech. What is guile? Come on. Guile. Sly or cunning intelligence. Uh, look at the synonyms. Cunning. Craftiness. Uh -huh. Craft. So, guile. This, hey, more, 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 more. Click it. Uh, deviousness. Read, come on, Yuri. Yes, sir. Wiliness, slyness, deviousness, shrewdness, wiles, ploys, schemes, maneuvers, tricks, ruses, deception, deceit. Those are the two words I wanted. Deception, deceit. Deception, deceit. We all understand deceit. You're being deceitful with men. You're being deceitful with your sister. Go back to Peter. Yes, sir. Wherefore? Laying aside all malice and all guile. Deceit. Go ahead. And hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. You got the Bible, but you won't do a daggone thing the Bible say. Read that. Give me that. What is it? Yuri? Hypocrite. A person who indulges in hypocrisy. Uh, yeah. Bruh. I don't like that. Read that. Hypocrisy. The practice of claiming to have moral standards or belief to which one's own behavior does not conform. You say you keep the commandments, but that's only when we're around each other. When you're not around each other, then it's, what way, what, what you, I'm on Backpage.com. I'm on, what's that a, uh, app? Uh, Tinder. I'm on um, OnlyFans. Oh, is that the name of it? Yeah, OnlyFans. Shoving bottles in my rectum. You nasty self. That's how Damn. you make money. That's how you make money. <laughs> hey, there's a sister that was with us yes, yes. that's doing that. Damn. She's charging people. Wait. I, she say, they say, uh, she said, sister, I, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I ain't going to give a name, but y'all know who she is. ASAP used to get on her a lot. The waffle. Ha, she said, hey, if I shove this up there, you got to pay me a hundred bucks. You see how big this damn bottle is? <laughs> and people pay hundreds of dollars or 300, 400 to see her do that. Oh. I ain't lying. Keep on playing. Where we at, Yuri? I just, my First Peter just... chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, oh. laying aside, aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all you evil speaking. You see that envies, envies, envies. We are not to be envy. Envy, the root of envy is hatred. The root of envy is hate. A brother can uh, have a spirit of, uh, um, uh, what's it called? When you can remember scriptures a lot. They can rem remember things like this. And certain men will hate that. Rather than say, man, I pray that the Lord give me a gift like that. Bro, how can you do that? You can remember these scriptures back to back. I admire that. No, but a Negro... I hate your black behind. I hate your black gums. I can't stand you. You think you all that. I hope you fall. I hope you fall and trip and bust your face. That's what Negroes do. Read it again, Yuri. I'm sorry. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. All evil speakers, murmurings, complaining. Go ahead. As newborn babes. We got to be in this truth like a newborn baby. Start all over again. It's going to be rough and tough. The old heads should know what I'm talking about. That's how it is. Read it again. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. The sincere milk of the word is not prophecies. The sincere milk of the word is not Prophecies. Give me that in Deuteronomy 6, please. I'm going to show you the, the milk. I want verse 1, then jump to 7. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land where ye go to possess it. Go ahead, jump verse down seven. to 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently 
unto thy children. What are we supposed to teach the children, brothers? Uh-huh. Go ahead. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you sitting around your house, you're supposed to talk about the commandments. Go ahead. And when thou walkest by the way. When you're walking down the way, you going to the bus with your kid. You talking about the commandments. You walking to the store with your child. You talking about the commandments. You making examples. What if this happens? What law is that? What if that happens? What law is that? Go ahead. And when thou liest down. And when you about to go to sleep. And when thou risest up. And when you, walk, when you wake up. That's the milk. Because you don't teach children prophecies. And what? Daddy, I don't understand. Mommy, I understand. You teach them the basics. The laws. Go on back now, Yuri. First Peter, Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Why? That ye may grow thereby. That's how you grow. That's how you grow. You got to put away the malice, the guile, hypocrisies, envies, evil speaking, and desire the commandments. That's how you grow. You don't grow by prophecy. I've seen camps. They know prophecies, but they hate their brother. They hate their sister. They teaching you can rape your little girls. You can commit adultery and get the kingdom. They plotting to fight IUIC on the corners. How can we set them up to start a fight? Nigga, please. Those men are not growing in the spirit. Yuri, you with me? Where we at? We just read 1 Peter 2 and 2. Keep reading. Verse 3. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Go ahead. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men. Christ was rejected of men. Go ahead. But chosen of God. But Christ was chosen of God. Go ahead. And precious. Uh-huh. Ye also. Ye also, meaning us. Well, go ahead. As lively stones. All of us in here to be like lively stones. What makes us lively? The commandments. God's word, his law. That's that right. Is, and, and that lively, of course, is the commandments. Then it means what it says. I hate a boring teacher. It, 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 can you get me Deuteronomy 28, verse 16? I can't stand it. You're not lively. You don't believe. Because if you believe, you be lively when you bring it out. Revelation is something easy like Revelation, the color of Christ. That should still excite you. Because the person you're teaching never heard it. They didn't know it. So that should make you lively. I am watching uh, 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 the, the Haitian show. He's not you. Here you go. You can tell a, born, a brother's born. Here you go. I just, now, I don't speak Creole, but I can read spirits. Here we go. The, when you see the glasses right here, <laughs> and the posture, <laughs> Here you go. I'm looking, I'm like, what the hell? The hell come on, this? man, put some life in that thing. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. And I spoke to Captain Severity. I went, why do you get them born teachers? Oh, well, they higher rank. I said, I don't give a damn about high. Get the young men that got some fire. Get the young men that got that lively spirit, their zeal, That's their faith. Right. Put them up there. That's going to draw the people in. Because people feed off your faith. That brother believed what he's saying. Damn. That's right. But that dead spirit brother over there, mm, he don't believe. He tell them, yeah, get the scripture, bro. You go, give him, go get the scripture. <laughs> get dude in me, 20 years, 60 years. <laughs> Ain't nobody listening to that crap. I remember being in camp when, when I was young, and the first brother that goes up could not be a boring brother. The first brother that go up to teach got to come with the fire. Why? To, bro to bring the people in. You understand that? <laughs> The first, I remember my brother go, I don't like going first. That was the, this new group, this new group, I don't like. What the hell? Yeah, you remember, we, would, we used to fight yeah, to, go to go up first. Right. Because we know whoever go up first when the fire, you That's got right. more time. You got more time. That first brother come with the fire, you know? And so this other dude, I ain't going to mention his name, he said, I don't want to go first. He want to, he want to, he wait till the, the crowd come. Then he, oh, let me say something now. But, but here you go. He said, let me, let me teach now. So it was an Ephraimite in the audience. He had his uh, book and pen. Give me your book and pen. He had notes. He says, uh, so the, this new brother to come up. He said, uh, so you said that Puerto Ricans are the tribe of Ephraim. Uh, can you break that down for me? Uh, book, chapter, and verses, please. And he goes like this. And the brother couldn't, he couldn't break it down. 
could not break down Genesis 49 and Deuteronomy 33 about Ephraim. So he goes to the same brother that he just took down. Oh, come on back, bro. Come on back. Bring, bring, bring it back. Bring it back. And that's how the Lord embarrassed brothers like that. That's how he embarrassed you. You understand what I'm saying? Where we at? You're already yeah, going. Bishop, you know, you, always have a, you also have a set of brother where that he know what scripture. You know I mean, you teaching, he know what scripture to M you with. He said, now nah, I'm going to wait for my time. Yeah. Nah, I'm going to let him hang there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, like you remember you been in the scripture, exhort one another. Right. It's like even though in a clubhouse, you understand, your brothers who's in the clubhouse, we in there as a team. Don't let nobody cop in, uh, cop in there with any type of folly, man. That's right. I mean, M, M the brother with bullets, man. Mm-hmm. Put the bullets in his. But some brothers are, yo, I'm going to sit back. Don't, don't be like that. Exhort one another. Right. Man. As a team. As a teamwork. Exactly. Read that again, Yuri. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. I want y'all to understand the analogy. We are all built up a spiritual house. I'm a brick. He's a brick. He's a brick. We are together to make that house. So guess what? If I'm going through a scripture and I don't remember the chapter and verse, guess what his job is? To give the meat of the chapter and verse. That's what his job. We are working together. But when you got that brother to say, I ain't going to give him the scripture. I want him to be embarrassed. That's the evil nigga right there. The hell is this? He don't understand. Verse, read verse 5 again. Ye also, as lively stones, <clears throat> are built up a spiritual house. He don't understand we are, a, we are being built up as a house. Brick upon brick upon brick upon brick, working together as a defense for the gospel. That man don't understand the mission. Read on. And holy priesthood mm-hmm. to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Give Christ. Me 2 Timothy 2 again. Second Timothy 2, let me look at it. Verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Mm -hmm. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from sin. Go ahead. But in a great house. So remember, we just read about that spiritual house. So Paul is telling Timothy about this great house, which is Israel, the tabernacle of David, which is fallen, is being rebuilt. Give me the Acts 15 real quick. Acts 15, Yuri. uh, Might be 15 and 16 verse. Acts 15, verse 15, I'm thinking. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 15, verse 16. Here's that spiritual house. Watch this. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is falling down. So we are building the tabernacle of David that is falling. That is the great spiritual house. The 12 tribes of Israel. Everybody understand that? Go ahead, Yuri. And I will build again the ruins thereof, mm-hmm. and I will set it up. Now, that's all I want to go back to Timothy now. Yes, sir. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. That's the choice, brothers, the choice sisters, go ahead. But also of wood. In this truth, you got brothers and sisters that are gold. Brothers and sisters that are silver, meaning precious elements. But then it says but also of wood. Some brothers, some sisters come here of wood and what, Yuri? And of earth. What does that mean? Read on. And of some to honor and some to dishonor. Some of us in here are to honor. Some of us in here are to dishonor. Why dishonor? Because we let our sin take precedence in our lives. It precedes God's commandments. God's commandments are second. My sin, my pleasure is for... Give me that in Hebrews um, 10, 26 or 11 about uh, sin is pleasure. It's somewhere around there. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. That's it. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God... Listen good. ...than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The pleasures of sin for a season. So we all know sin is pleasure... It makes you feel good, but it's temporary because after you bust, it's over. See, that's a nice word. I can use that word, right? It's a nice word. It's over. 
The sweat is gone, it's done, it's over, but you put that above the laws of God. It's called a devil nut. It's called what? The devil nut. A devil nut? The devil nut. Oh. The devil's nut? Is that what it's called? Yep. Thank you. Where are we at, Yuri? <laughs> uh, Come on Second back. Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Go ahead. If a man therefore purge himself from these. So brothers, sisters, if you know you want to be gold, you want to be silver, you got to purge yourself from the wood and the earth. You got to recognize the spirits around you that ain't no damn good. I remember as a young man coming up in the truth, I had to recognize which men around me was pieces of S-H-I-T. Yes, no. Because after class, we would go downtown Manhattan and be in the clubs. And I'm in the club like, why am I here? I just came from learning the scriptures, but I'm with these knuckleheads in the club. And they're trying to pick up women. I'm like, no, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I had to stop hanging out with them. So now, I went, the school is crowded. It's crowded. There's no seats. The brothers that I was hanging out with, they're in the back. I'm there. I'm like, damn, I'm around these dudes again. The elders is teaching. It's crowded. Standing room only. So I push my way through the crowd. And everybody's cursing me. Nigga, there ain't no room up front. Where you, hey, hey, nigga, there ain't no room up front. Where you going? Ain't no chairs there. I said, shh. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. And I sat by behind on the floor. That's what I did. Anytime it was crowded, I sat on the floor. I stayed the hell away from the wood, the earth, the dishonorable men. And those men that are to dishonor, where are they today? Gone. And some of them that are around are saying you can rape 12-year-olds. Damn. Damn. It's like, what the hell's going on? I got Thank the Lord he's separated me from them. But you got to do that. You men, you women. Y'all have to do that. You sisters sit around murmurers and complainers. You got to separate yourself from those spirits. Remember in Oklahoma, the brother after class, the brother go, hey, anybody want to go to strip club? And three brothers say, yeah. Right after Sabbath class. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Liberia. No, this was Oklahoma too. Oklahoma again. Brother said, I'm broke. I can't get a job. Sister said, I got a job for you. Come by my house tonight. But well, both of them, Liberia too. And the woman says, I'm going to make it rain. And she's throwing dollars as he's stripping for her. You can't make this. That was Oklahoma and Liberia did that. All them old women. I ain't saying Liberia doing it now. We had to sit. We had to clean house. They was 50, 60-year-old women uh, paying the young boys to have sex with them. Like, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? This was years ago, but it's a true story. Where are you at, Yuri? I'm sorry. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Go ahead. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. But you got to purge yourself. No, this guy got another story. Bring it sister tells another sister, my love life with my husband ain't that exciting. Why is she telling the sister that? Anyway, what sister, that's sister A, sister A, sister B. So what sister B does is buys some lingerie from Victoria's Secret for her and a toy. I'll just word it like that. And a toy. Anyway, she says, sister B says to sister A, hey, my husband and me can really spice up y'all's sex life. If you know what I mean. I ain't lying. You remember the story? So they swap. They swap mates. You can't make this stuff. That was uh, uh, San, uh, San Antonio. Wife swapping. All up in the midst. Oh, when we found that thing out. Oh, there was hell on earth. Everybody got to go. Everybody got to go. One of them is on TikTok teaching. I ain't going to call his name up. But you sisters, you just all over the place. Oh, this brother here, you have no idea. I just sit back. Say, Lord, you do what you're going to do. Whoever ain't right, let them sisters draw to that brother. She's going to be wife number five. 
Damn. With, with toys. Anyway, where we at, Yuri? I'm sorry. Where Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Don't let me go on a tangent, bro. If a man therefore purge himself from these. So you got to purge yourself from those spirits, God. He shall be a vessel unto honor. Mm -hmm. Sanctify. That's, only, that's when you become a vessel to honor. When you separate from those dishonorable spirits. Go ahead. Sanctify. In meat for the master's use. And good for the master's use. What verse was that? And prepared unto every good work. Mm -hmm. Verse you, 21. You're going, to be a, you're going to be used in this work. We'll say, hey, bro, we've been watching. The Spirit showed us. You want to go with us to this country? You want to go with us to that country? That's what it means. Yeah, you want to uh, help or uh, go to camp? You want to do this, do that? I want it to be meat for the master's use. We want it to be meat for the master's use. Yuri, what's your, where you at? Verse 22. Go ahead. Flee also youthful lust. Y'all hear that? Youthful lust. And it don't mean it's youthful lust because when you're young, you wake up when you're young with, you know, the woody's like that. Woo! And you're excited. You want to you wanna do something. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Sure. That don't mean that's only for youth. Because when you get old, too, some of you still got youthful lust. You got to have it. Read it again. Flee also youthful lust, mm -hmm. but follow righteousness, mm -hmm. faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Hey, give me Luke 12, 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So the Lord wants to give all of us the kingdom. But he's going to give a parable. He's going to give a story. Go ahead. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Mm -hmm. Where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. So build your spiritual bank account with the Lord. Do the commandments. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Go ahead. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's why when men and women say, oh, I watch IUIC all the time. I watch all your videos. But do you support this? Should read that again, Yuri. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If your heart is in this truth, your treasure will be in this truth. Literally. You will support. Everybody understand what he's saying? But you have men and women, and you got brothers that want to rise up as, as uh, officers and captains. But they too don't support, their, their treasure is not where their heart is. They don't raise brothers like that up. Because if we're gone and it's up to that man to carry this truth on, he will not carry it on. Read again, Yuri. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Read. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Mm -hmm. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. That when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Go ahead. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. We got to be found watching. Watching covers a, a litany of things. Studying. Praying, applying, teaching as well. Go ahead. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. Now we're going to find out what this meat is. Go ahead. And will come forth and serve them. Mm -hmm. And if he, he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. So whatever watch he comes, if you're doing the work, you're going to be blessed. Go ahead. Verse 39, in this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore. Hey, you know what I want? Find me the one. It might be his in this chapter. Jump down. Jump down to verse 42. Verse 42. That's what I want. And the Lord said. Who then is that faithful and wise steward? We all want to be that faithful and wise steward. Come on. Whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household. That's the meat that we want. To be made a ruler over God's house. Go ahead. To give them their portion of meat in due season. So the portion of meat is being ruler. Rulership. That is the portion of meat. Everybody understand that? That's right. Come on. 
Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Watch this. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. Watch this, Yuri. Hold that. Hold that. Give me Daniel 7.27. Here's a precept. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. That means the whole planet Earth shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. Shall be given. Come on, put it up. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. So who, that's what he's talking about. Was that it, Yuri? Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Uh -huh. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. Everybody's going to obey Christ, the king. Let's go back. Luke chapter 12, verse 44. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. I don't know about y'all, but I want that thing right there. That's you want that right. thing, brothers? Yes, all right, let's see. Well, watch this next verse. Verse 45. But... And if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken. Hold on. This is what Diotrephes did. When it says my Lord delays his coming, he begins to beat. What it said, begin to beat the men's servants and maid, maidens. That goes into a lot of things. Because we'll read beat and think, oh, that means punch him in the face. Not necessarily. You're teaching wrong. You're having sex with all the women. You're stealing the money, using the money from the congregation in a, for inappropriate reasons. You're buying Bentleys. Everybody understand that? That's what it's going into. Read it again. But, and if that servant say it in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens. So he was abusing them emotionally, financially, physically, because he was having sex with all the women. Go ahead. And to eat and drink, and to be drunk. And getting drunk. Go ahead. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, mm. and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder. He will do what, Yuri? Cut him in sunder. Wow. Kill him. Go ahead. And will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Wow. That's that lake of fire. Go ahead. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. Some of you, you know the scriptures, but you will not do what the scriptures say. Read it again. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You're going to get judgment. Go ahead. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. That's some new brothers, some new sisters that come, and they don't really know too much. And if he comes in that time, they still won't get judged, but it's not going to be as bad as the brothers that sat here and knew and learned and did not apply. Go ahead. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Mm -hmm. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Give me Matthew 24.10. We're almost done. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. This goes back to Abimelech. Many shall be offended at God's laws and betray one another. That's what happens. Okay? Read. And shall hate one another. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets. That's all I want. Yes, sir. Give me, hey, give me the FBI. Jay Gover. Jay Gover. Read that, Yuri. When FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover was asked what was the single greatest threat to the USA, he answered Negro unity. The white man has always hated unity amongst our people. Always hated it. And brothers, we are the one, one of the only groups that is uniting northern and southern kingdom Israelites together. Not just here in America, but globally, internationally, That's worldwide. Right. You understand that? That's what's going on. Hey, 
for as we're about to close, give me second edge with 16 and 68. We're almost done. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you. So this great multitude deals with the new world order when these people try to bring forth the one world religion, and they come against the Israelites. That's what 68 down is going into. Six, this is going into the ADL, SPLC, uh, give me some more of them names. APOC, Israel projects. Israel projects, the Canary Mission, all run by Amalek, all run by so-called Jewish people. Read it again. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Because they hate us. Watch this. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. Those of you who don't study, don't apply, don't pray, you will be a vessel for them to use against this truth. Go ahead. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. Once they finish using you, they're going to finish you. Once they finish using you, they will finish you, if you understand what I mean by that. Go ahead. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. That's what's going to happen. There will be an insurrection against us that love the Lord, that keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. There will be. It will happen. This time right now is grace time for us to study, ask the Lord to increase our faith, get our minds right, keep your peck in your pants. Go ahead. They shall be like madmen, sparing none. These nations, these people are going to be like madmen, sparing none. Go ahead. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. So law enforcement will be involved in this also. Because as laws, you put it on the screen, as laws are made, they're saying speaking against homosexuality is hate speech. Saying that we're the Israelites is hate speech. It's like saying that they're not is hate speech. Legislation, I mean, we're warning y'all over and over and over. Love, what would you want to say? Read. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. See that? For they shall waste and take away their goods. There will be penalties for saying certain things. Goods will be taken away. Homes will be taken away. Read again, verse 72. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. You will lose homes. You will lose properties. Go ahead. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. Why? Because we're going to stay in the faith. We're going to stay faithful to the king. Everybody understand that? Yes, Go ahead. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Uh -huh. Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Hey, give me that precept in Jeremiah 30 and 7. We're coming back here, Yuri, so don't drop it. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Right, that time is not yet, but it is coming. Go back. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 74. Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. That's right, come on. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. So don't be afraid. Why are you saying that? Because as people are casting us from homes and houses, we're being incarcerated. Some of us will be killed. The Lord says in verse 75, one more again. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your God. Because imagine going through something like that. Brothers and sisters lost their homes, their houses, cast into the streets, some incarcerated, some killed. Satan will be in your head. Why are you still believing that Bible? Stop following that. Go join the, the masses of people that is against that. Bishop, that's yeah. what verse 68 is saying. That's what verse 68 is saying. Because it said, uh, go back to verse 68. Same thing Bishop says in verse 68. Go ahead. 
For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Come on. And they shall take away certain of you and mm -hmm. feed you, mm -hmm. being idle with things offered unto idols. Feeding you with what? Feeding you with what? Being idle, right? There's a little word. There's a little number there. Uh, 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 they have one there, right? When you read it, they say being, being unable to resist. Mm -hmm. Because of what they're feeding you with. You, you're going to be unable to resist. Yep. To resist that, yo, you got to take the death. Yo, you got to take the wab. You got to take this. You're going to say, no, nah, I'm not in this no more. That's not what I signed for. Right. They may feed you with money. Yep. Like they say, uh, what is that, that law? Not law. That job to be an informant now is like 80 grand. $80,000 to be uh, an informant. Confidential informant. $80,000. Bishop, you said... No, you didn't say it right, Bishop. $80,000 to sell your soul. To the yes, day. yes, exactly. Where we at, Yuri? Verse 75. Uh -huh. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. For God is your God. Come on. And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, mm -hmm. saith the Lord God. Let not your sins weigh you down. Why say that? Because we all sin at times. We mess up. But he says, don't let your sins weigh you down. Because Satan will be on you. You sin, you know you did this, you did that. You ain't no good. You might as well just leave. Read that part again, Yuri. Let not your sins weigh you down. Uh -huh. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So once you sin and you repent it, don't let that sin rise back up. Because brothers and sisters have committed adultery, whatever it is. And after time, we let them back. But don't keep doing it. Why? Because as we read on, it's going to tell you, it's going to take you over. It's going to overcome you. Go ahead. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins mm -hmm. and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. Mm. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. So to be bound with your sins, meaning you can't, whatever that sin is, you can't come out of it. You're not even trying to fight no more. There's nobody that can, when it says covered with, uh, like a field covered over with bushes, nobody can get through to you. There's no scripture we can give you to make you snap out of the spell. Like it said, give me that Romans 6. 6.14, I think it is. Put it on the screen. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Is that the verse I want you to Yes, sir. Uh -huh. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin is not to have dominion over you. We put one brother out for adultery, all right? Give him some time, get himself together, watch class, support the truth. Then we find out he's been buying prostitutes. He went from one thing, now he's gotten worse and worse and worse. Go ahead. For sin shall not have dominion over you. And, oh, and why? Because his wife was a freaking whore. Damn. His love for her was so much, she committed adultery. He saw her phone. They got several kids together. He coming from camp. The hoe is sending pictures of her vagina to some dudes. Talking about, I want, I want you to smash this thing tonight. The husband's mad, but it Damn. broke his mind. Broke his mind. So now he's so broken as a man. He could, it was so unbelievable. He, couldn't, he could not handle it. Now he's dealing with prostitutes. You can't make this stuff up. Never love a woman so much that when she go off, you're broken. You men understand that? You women too, I hope y'all understand that. You so in love that that love you got for that person supersedes the love for the most high. Now your mind and spirit is broke. Simple as hell. Let the hoe go. She ain't no damn good. Vagina smell like hell anyway. You just tolerated it. Anyway, where we at, Yuri? I'm sorry. We just read Romans 6, 14. We finished 2nd Ezra Hey, hey, give me that, that sister that, give me the article. Give me the article. Look at this. You sisters. Now, nobody, we have never taught, beat your child with a cane, with a stick. Have, have y'all heard any of us ever? No. So this woman here, read her, Yuri. Woman accused of Durham murder of son, three admits hitting him with Cain. Raise it up. Go ahead, start reading. A mother who denies murdering her three-year-old son has admitted hitting him with a garden cane hours before he collapsed and died, 
saying she was following the teachings of the Bible. Yeah, right. Cr Christina Robinson, who was a follower of the Black Hebrew Israelite movement. And you know what they do? Because the ADL is behind that. They never specify what, which group, what camp, hey, what congregation. It's always very vague and generic. Hey, Bishop, it could be as simple as them posting something on their YouTube of a video that they may have liked. It could be from any camp. It could be from anything from the Bible, and they, they can still attach it to us. Right. That's, this, is, this is how propaganda starts. They get the public against us. Notice when white people do something evil, they don't say he was a Christian. He went to this. They don't do that. But with us, they always throw that in there. Go back. We're going to read it again. Read Bishop, it again. Yes. they didn't say... What synagogue that devil belonged to that had a sex oh, cult right. with 30 women right. that he enslaved in 2024. They didn't say nothing about that. Thank you. You're right. Read that. Christina Robinson, who was a follower of the Black Hebrew Israelite movement, had been watching a YouTube video which quoted scripture promoting the rod for correction. When her toddler son, Dwellanaya, was messing about with his food, she decided to punish him with a ba bamboo cane from the garage that she used for plants. Robinson 30 was giving evidence at her trial at Newcastle Crown Court. She denies causing a fatal injury to dwell in Naya by violently shaking him at the family home in Ushaw Moore, Durham in November 2022. Robinson is also accused of deliberately scalding him, causing severe burns to his legs and that, buttocks. We don't teach that. What the hell? Read that again. Robinson is also accused of deliberately scalding him, causing severe burns to his legs and buttocks in the weeks before his death. The court has heard that she chose not to get any medical help for the burns, which would have caused terrible pain. Mm. The court heard that on the day of her son's death, she was observing the Sabbath of the religion she followed. She, she, she said she had not been following it long but it's more of a lifestyle than a religion. The court heard the black Hebrew Israelites follow teachings of the Old and New Testament and the Apocrypha. They say they are a tribe of Israel who were displaced to Africa, then sold into slavery. She I'm was, telling you, this is propaganda. All this is propaganda, go ahead. She was watching a video that mentioned using the cane for correction. Jamie Hill, KT, defending acts what her son had done that needed to be disciplined. She replied, he was messing about with his food he was not eating. Robinson said she was a complete beginner and now realizes she was misguided. Honestly, I thought I was doing the right thing. I was happy and eager. Wait, wait, scolding him with hot water and beating him with a cane, not getting medical attention. She thought she was doing the right thing. What video was that? I want to see the video she watched. Yeah, and that was said. Right. Good. Honestly, I thought I was doing the right thing. I was happy and eager to jump into something. It felt like I belong, but I just got it wrong. I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I was doing it right. I just really wanted to be obedient to God, and I thought this was part of it. You can't make this stuff up. Prosecutor Richard Wright KC put it to Robinson that Dwellanaya at this stage had more than 60 injuries to his body. Wow. Did it occur to you he might not be that hungry with 15 to 20 percent of his body covered in burns? Did it occur to you that might put him off his food? Mm. The alleged offenses took place when her husband was away from the family home on RAF basic training. Robinson grew up in Tansworth, Staffordshire before her family relocated to Bulgaria when she was 16 because her mother wanted to be mortgage free. She returned to the UK when she was 23 and moved to the northeast of England to bring up a family with her husband. Robinson said her husband did not want more children. She had four miscarriages. She told the court that she wanted to have a large family with double figure children. Robinson originally told police that Dwellanaya suffered his burns by messing about in the shower. That was a lie she admitted. She scalded him when she was cleaning him using a shower head, the court heard. She did not seek medical attention because she felt bad for what she had done and ashamed. Instead, the court heard she gave him 
paracetamol and cowball and bandaged him. The trial continued. So, all right, then. So, you sisters, I pray nobody in here is doing that or anything like that because that's not taught in the scriptures at all. At all. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. All right, we're going to see. Now, to me, she had this mental, there's something going on mentally upstairs. That's why, you brothers, you got to prove these sisters. Some sisters have kids, they don't want the kids. They get angry and filled with hate against the children because that's what I'm seeing. Okay. She possessed by Satan, Bishop. Yeah. yeah. We don't teach that here. Exactly. Give me Revelation 2 before we close out. I'd just like to hear this one. Revelation 2, 25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Uh -huh. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So what we have right now, brothers, we have the scriptures, we have God's laws, we have the king. Hold fast to what we have. The understanding, the learning, the discipline that we are learning in the school, hold fast to it. Don't let it go. Read it again. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Mm. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Hey, hey, get the works. What are the works? Second Ezra 724, the works. Because people often ask, what are the works? Keepeth my works. Second, Second Ezra 7, verse 24. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 24. But his law have they despised and denied his covenants and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. And have not performed his works. That's his covenant. That's his commandments. Everybody see that? Let's go back. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. So wait, wait, wait. That first part, overcometh. Brothers and sisters, what we read today, we got to overcome that Abimelech code. We got to overcome that spirit of preeminence, that spirit of manipulation, the spirit of hatred and guile. We got to overcome that what we read in Peter is said, uh, put away all malice, guile, hypocrisies, evil speakings, envies that you may grow. So that's what it's dealing with. And he that overcometh. Read it again, 26. And he that overcometh. And keepeth my works. And keepeth the law, the commandments. Unto the end. Unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. How many of you want power over the nations? Say I. I. I want power over the nations, brother. Come on. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. We're going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. Come on. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Uh -huh. Even as I received of my father. That's right. And I will give him the morning star. The morning star is that understanding, that level of godhood that Christ has. We want that thing. Don't we want that thing? Yes, sir. Come on. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. And with that, we say shalom. All praise, all praise the most high, all praise. All praises, all praises, all praises. All praises, all praise to the Lord. All praises, all praises. Check, check. All right, all praise to the Most High. Let's give Bishop another round of applause for that exceptional class. All praise to the Father. All right. All praise. I see. We ready? All right. All right, so everybody take out your phones uh, and scan. This is for IUIC Atlanta. All right, follow them. Yeah, y'all can clap for that. Clap for that thing right there. All right, uh, this is to follow their social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All right, we'll give you about 15, 30 seconds or so.
Yeah, like the Atlanta YouTube page. Y'all got what y'all got? Um, Patient Saints. Y'all got the... What else y'all got, Cap? Y'all got everything. I already said YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. What else you need, Cap? What you got? Yo, listen, man. IYC Atlanta is bringing fire. Stop playing games, man. <laughs> Subscribe and stop playing games. Yeah. They took down our first page. Right, right, it's time right, right. to get it back popping. Let's go. There you That's go, Cap. Right. All praise. All right, ITV, ready? All right, play the first one. Gaiocho Music Festival in Little Havana. That's what's happening, of course, on Southwest 8th Street. The largest Latin music festival in the nation is back. Gaiocho kicks off on Sunday. Thirty stages are going to be on Cayocho. Fifteen blocks of Cayocho are closed for one million visitors that are coming to this festival. Praises, all praises. The prophets assemble together in Miami in storm the Calais Ocho Festival, the largest Hispanic festi festival in the United States. Northern Kingdom needed to hear the word of God and the purple and gold delivered. It's time for Northern Kingdom to wake up. All right. Next one with Detroit. I go off what the book is saying verbatim, but you're going off the doctrine that you've been taught in Christianity. Right now, God is raising up a army of black men. You know what I'm saying? An army of black men and Hispanic men taking back the name. That means Christ is a black man. So don't ever look at yourself like you're not something great. Take the cross off if you really believe. Chuck it in the middle of seven miles. Show God your belief. Follow Acts chapter 10. He's saying that there's no respect of persons when it comes to the nation of Israel. So what did they call us before we got off those slave ships? We're not necessarily American, right? We have U.S. citizenship because we live here and we're not from here. Though we've had great leaders like Malcolm and Martin Luther, our true leader is the Christ. A people of the people in major destitute, full of all the desires in the world, except the major institute. All praises, all praises. IUIC Detroit blazes the streets, hitting two barbershops, two camps, and one library presentation all in the same day. Like and subscribe to all platforms and watch as we turn the city upside down. All praises. That's excellent. Right. Excellent. All right. Let's uh, keep it rolling. I'm Jared Austin Jerahan with Israel United in Christ by the leadership of Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yalsop, and Bishop Kanai. What is the problem? Sin. Sin right. is the problem. Sin, as you read 1 John 3 and 4, is the transgression of God's laws. Right. And anything is not something you do bad, it's something you actually literally do against God. Like, thou shalt not commit adultery. If you sleep with another man's wife, that is sin. Uh, what's the solution? Repenting from that sin. Because God gave us laws, we're supposed to abide by this. Like we abide by the Constitution. We are supposed to abide by the God's laws. Yeah, we are here at Columbus, Georgia, and we had had a, a, not a sit down, but uh, we've been a part of a community res conflict resolution that they have been hosting for the past two weeks, going on three weeks now. So it was success. I mean, we just try to be able to uh, build some 
connections and community outreach to this uh, event. So we shared what Israel United in Christ can provide solutions when it comes to the youth violence in our communities. With that Israel, we say shalom. All praise. All all praises. Uh, that's IUIC Atlanta assisted the community leaders of Columbus, Georgia with solutions for addressing ongoing youth violence in the neighborhood. All right, all praise to the Father. Let's go with Columbus. One of the things we talked about today in the youth prevention is how to channel your emotions, how to redirect that emotion to something positive. The things they talked about was like heart touching because I lost my cousin and I was there. I seen him lose his life and I was like, wow. You know, other people, you know, actually understand and stuff. So I was shocked. I would love to see these guys come back again. I think the kids would like that too. And I love the participation that some of them were having. As a parent, I listen to the music that my children listen to so that we can have conversations about those lyrics. When the lyrics are about violence, we can talk about alternatives to violence. Hey, Shalom, Israel, most high and Christ bless. I'm Captain Joy. I'm here with Officer Kinez and Minidad. All praises. Also, I'm here with Officer Baja, Officer Obidiah. Hey, we did an excellent presentation today. The teacher, the principal, the dean, everybody was present. We also have guest speakers talk to the students and give the aside as well. All praise the most I got for this opportunity. He has blessed us with here in Columbus, Ohio. Lord's will, we can do more. Most high and Christ bless. Shalom. All oh, praises. Shouts out to Captain Joel. IUIC Columbus hosted another youth violence seminar at a local high school. All oh, praises to the most high. To see the full seminar, subscribe to IUIC Columbus, Ohio YouTube page. All right, so family, everybody take out your phones again. All right, we have a new Instagram page. This is the Youth Violence and Conflict Resolution Seminar page. All right, it highlights all of the work that's been uh, getting done. So let's, let's give a round of applause for that. All right, we've been seeing these every week, making connections in the community. So let's make sure we get behind this and support. That's right. So we'll give you a few seconds on that. All right, let's go with the new moon ad. All right, let's clap it up, Israel. March 25th through the 26th is the Lord's new moon. All right, all right. And y'all know what's coming up in the month of April. Pull up the next slide. The Lord's Passover. All right, let's clap it up for that as well. April the 8th through April the 15th. All right, all praise to the Father. All right, play the next clip. Shalom, this is Captain O.C. of the IUIC Boozy Club. Today I'm going to show you and tell you how you can join the Boozy Club. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to send an email to iuic.fundraising at israelunite.org. In the body of the email, you're going to include your name, where you congregate, and how long you have been with IUIC. Once you sent this email, wait for a response, and then you too will be a member of the IUIC. Shalom. All praises. Clap it up for the Booster Club. Hey, we got to get behind the Booster Club. So if you have not joined and you would like to, make sure to follow those instructions. As you can see, your money is going to a good cause. All right, the profits are doing the work. All right, let's put this up. Grab your phones again. Uh, this is going to assist us in our sabbath broadcast we're seeking your assistance to kindly enhance our national broadcast kindly share a minute to provide feedback by answering five brief questions All right, so this week, all right, we are highlighting the IUIC Washington, D.C. camp. Let's give a round of applause. 
All right, so subscribe today and support the mission. Let's build an organized nation and return to our former glory. All right, let's play that. Hey, Shalom, Israel. Most High in Christ. This is Captain Matthew here with IUIC DC and Baltimore. Make sure that you all subscribe to all our socials. We need you all support and be doing it for the people. With that, say Shalom. Most High in Christ. Blessed. All oh, praises. Let's get them phones out again and scan the QR code. Shouts out to Captain Matthew and the officers up there. All right, the prophets of God have returned to Rome. Subscribe to IUIC Italy and IUIC Diaspora on all social media platforms to push the word of God and awake the dry bones of Italy. All right, let's play that. Oh, I skipped one? Yeah, skip one. Hey, put that up for us, please. All right, we got the 2024 calendars on the originalroyalty.com website. Let's clap it up for that. Make sure to support and get your calendar. All right, let's go with Isaiah 11 11. Yo, we go to this across the waters, teach our people. This is a miss. Hey, make sure you subscribe to IUIC Diaspora page. All right, let's clap it up. Let's clap it up. IUIC, Isaiah 11 11 doing big things. Speaking of big things, Royalty Films is doing big things with The Curse of Miriam. We could do better than that. We could do better than that. We making history, family. We making history. All right. So make sure to visit royaltyfilms.com and support by clicking the donate button at the top right. So just to make sure we all understand, when we support, we can go from making a 15-minute film, 30-minute film, to two hours long. Wouldn't y'all like to see a film that went for two hours, made by your own people? All right. So let's make sure we support. All right, let's keep it going. All right, Little Lights cast and call. Little Lights is an educational kids TV show centered around puppets based on the 12 tribes of Israel. Viewers will experience how the Little Lights interact, learn, and problem solve by applying biblical wisdom, laws, statutes, and commandments. We are looking to fulfill the following positions. So go ahead and look over that. All right, and if you are interested... You could email, you can email them at little lights at Israel Unite dot org. All right. All right. So we just spoke about the curse of Miriam. So we got a little uh, promo for you. Uh, this took place last week in Jersey. So uh, y'all can pull that up for us. Hey, Shalom, Israel, most high in Christ, bless. Hey, we are here. Hey, Shalom, Israel, most high in Christ, bless. Hey, we are here the day, the moment we've been waiting for. The Curse of Miriam premiere. We are here with Deacon Isaac. And now that we're actually here, could you walk us through that? Your excitement, containing the excitement. Walk us through that, Deacon. Very excited. Uh, there was a lot of anxiety, you know, dealing with the different um, things, complications that we had. Just little hurdles that we had to overcome, especially at the last minute. 
with making sure that we get the film out in a timely fashion. What are your expectations on this film right here? Professional actors, professional singers, professional editing. If the first one catch many rewards, then Demi the Lord gonna put us up there again. With um, Joseph Dreams, that was fire. So, Curse of Miriam, I know it's gonna be hot, man, you know? I think it's gonna be the second of many, many great films. Ten more, maybe in the next two, three years. What were your thoughts on the film? Oh, it was a great film, man. Everything. I was almost in tears. He was able to see God's power. Pretty knew it was going to be something amazing. It, it exceeded my expectations. That was crazy. The effects was crazy on that thing. Different color, the leopards. Crazy. When the Lord came down in the chair and everybody got, I almost ran too. <laughs> Dance sequence was beautiful. What book and chapter would you like to see on the big screen? I want to see the book of Maccabees. Jonah. When the holy children, the Revelation chapter 1, 14 and 15. The, the white Jesus did in our mind for a long time. All right, let's clap it up. Let's clap it up. All right, Royalty Films premiered its highly anticipated second short film, The Curse of Miriam in New Jersey. The movie was a great success among the audience. The true imagery of God's chosen people and his wonderful judgments were rightfully displayed on the big screen. Once yep. again, to support the project and future projects, go to www.royaltyfilms.com. So, your cap, yes, you sir. have to make sure you let them know nobody can do it like New York City, bro. You was there, you experienced it, bro. Deacon, I just want to start off, Deacon, by giving all praise to the, to the one true God. That's right. Just, you know, just like the forefather said, it's not him that's going to judge the people. It's God that's going to judge the people. Uh, so giving all praise to the Lord. Because we all are UIC, right, D? No, 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 no. Hey, we all are UIC, right? We all are UIC, yes. We all, right? Yes, we all are UIC, man, but you got to give credit when credit is due. Shout out to New York. That's where it began, D. It's, it least, began in New well, York, no doubt, no see, doubt. See, we invite you New York. We make sure we take care of you, New York. Yes, sir, you did. We make you sure did. hospitality. Yes, sir. Come on, man. You have to give us some credit. Shouts out to New York. <laughs> Shouts out to Deacon Asaph, Deacon Malachi, Deacon Laba. You understand? All of the captains. Now nah, I appreciate it, man. Just a little joke. Just a little joke, D. Hey, uh, as you know, we're going to do, I think it's the second one coming out, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Listen, we need you to support, 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 support. We cannot, we cannot do this without y'all. Support. Come out. Come out. Support. Don't stay home. Come out. Support. Because when evil Esau movie come out, all of you are going to look at that crap. This is in righteousness. We bring the Bible to life. Come out and support your brothers. Dick and Isaac, shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you for Mosai to put in your spirit. Shout out to you, bro. All praise to Mosai. All praise. So that's next week. All right, that's next week. So all of the schools in the southeastern region, make sure to get with your role event planning reps tonight. Tonight so you can register. All right? Uh, let's keep it rolling. Hey, Shalom Israel, this is Captain O.C. And I want to invite you to the Curse of Miriam premiere next week. That's right, the Curse of Miriam premiere from Royalty Films. Listen, we inviting everybody out. We inviting Georgia. We inviting Alabama. We inviting the Carolinas. We inviting everybody in the Southeast to support our very own film. But check this out, that's not all. We are also going to have an original royalty concert. Your favorite artists are going to be there. One Lily, Legacy. So on and so forth. So show up and show out. Shalom. All right, all right, all right. So let's pull up the uh, the Curse of Miriam Instagram page. So let's take out our phones. All right, make sure we support. We got to make this bigger than any film ever. I think Esau got another film coming out as a matter of fact with Moses. So they giving us false imagery. We got to support the correct imagery. All right, so let's make sure we support. All right, all praise, all praise. So tonight, premiering on Original Royalty Records, the second video release, The Meekest Man featuring Abaddon from the studio album, The Curse of Miriam soundtrack, available exclusively tonight on OriginalRoyalty.com. All right, let's play the clip.
Hey, make sure you go check that out, man. That was that was short. All praises. Shouts out to Officer Abaddon. Let's keep it rolling, IT. We almost done. Almost done. All right. So the Curse of Miriam film soundtrack. All right. It's out on OriginalRoyalty.com. It's got eight tracks. They all fire. All right. So make sure we're behind our very own film. And pull up the last one with our merch. All right, new Original Royalty Recordings Artist Merchandise available at OriginalRoyalty.com. And this concludes tonight's announcements. All praise to the Father. All right, everybody got bread and wine? I'll praise. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he brake it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause... Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. That's some good bread here. Shout out to Alena. Yeah, I, yeah, man. Also, shout out to Jersey, man. Bread, Jersey bread was good, too. That make sure that fit me with a lot of bread, Bishop. That's a D we messed up the first time, but now we recover. Shout out to Jersey, man. All right, Israel. Let's rise on our feet. Let's give the Lord another round of applause for leadership's fire class. <laughs> Giving all praises to the Most High. All right. Many Israel, are you ready? Are you ready? What time is it? What time is it? Who's the king? Who's the king? What color is he? What color is he? Who are we? Who are we? Twelve tribes, twelve tribes, unity, unity, unity. Never give up, never give up, never give up. Now finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? His what? 